Hi there, I'm Lisa Marie. Welcome or welcome back. Today, I hope to inspire you by bringing you 50 wood DIYs. Oh my gosh, so much fun. I'm gonna use this 2022 farmhouse calendar and that is actually the picture I'm going to use. It was one of the months. And then I've got this piece that I got from the Goodwill. I got it for $3.99 plus it was a pink tag day so I got some 10% off. I'm gonna clean it with my crud cutter and then I'm gonna cover the whole top with the plaster color paint by Waverly. I love that color. It's perfect for something rustic. It's not stark white. Then I'm gonna take antique wax and this old makeup brush that I got at the Dollar Tree a long time ago that's seen better days, but it's perfect for dry brushing where you put a little bit on your brush, wipe most of it off, and then kind of drag it across and it gives it that old aged, you know, weathered look, which is what I'm going for here. I'm just gonna go ahead and go around the edges and make sure that those are a little bit distressed as well and it kind of bleeds over to the front. And then I'm gonna take my square ruler and I'm gonna measure one in every one and a half inches. I'm gonna put a little spot. I'm gonna do it on each of the ends and in the middle because my square isn't as long as this piece and I wanna be able to draw straight lines. And I'm gonna use the pencil and basically draw shiplap lines. And then I'm gonna just take my finger and smudge the pencil. And if it gets too dark, you can go back in with a little you know, paper towel, just kind of damp and wipe off the excess, which I do. And then because I didn't want it to be quite that dark, I'm gonna go back over with that plaster, just lightly dry brushing it over the top to mute out a little bit of those lines. I'm gonna fussy cut out the word farmhouse. See, it took a while, but it was well worth it. And I'm also gonna cut out the wreath. I am gonna go back and cut out the center of the wreath as well. I'm gonna use my Mod Podge. I'm just gonna start laying down the Mod Podge and then placing my letters over it. A couple of them broke apart, so I have to put them on individually. But this is something you can do if you don't have a cutting machine and you don't like the font on stickers, but you love the font on the calendar page. So I just thought this was so cute, I loved it. And then I'm just gonna put Mod Podge all over the top and that is that for the word. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the wreath, but I'm gonna turn this into a 3D wreath. I'm gonna use some actual greenery and embellish it. But now I'm gonna go all over the whole rest of the sign with the Mod Podge because I want it all to have a nice seal on it. Now I'm gonna take these little boxwood pieces, and then I've also got some other little picks. I think they, one of them is eucalyptus, I think. I always say the wrong one. Anyway, you guys know what they are, right? <laughs> and then I start hot gluing them on. I clip the pieces off the pick, and then I have all these little extra pieces that I'm gonna fill in with. And that way you get a couple colors, and look how cute it is. I love this one. I think it turned out so cute. You have to tell me what you think. I love adding something to a flat sign and making it kind of three-dimensional. It just gives it just a little more interest and it looks like a real wreath is on there. And yeah, of course I could have done that, but I like the way it turned out. I found this little tool caddy that originally came from the Home Depot. I got it for $1.99 and I did get a discount on that. I've got these lemons and limes I ordered on Amazon and this cute scrap of paper that I also got on Amazon. And what I'm gonna do is clean off this little caddy first with the crud cutter. Then I'm gonna use my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and I'm just gonna paint the whole thing. I want it to have a nice clean white base. Once that's done, looks nice and fresh now. I'm going to cut out some of that scrapbook paper and I lost the footage, but I cut a piece for each of the sides the shorter tall sides and then the two other sides. I'm just showing you a quick picture of it. I roughed up the edges with my scissor blade, which you don't get to see, but I just did that to give it a little bit nicer look. And then I also painted the top handle bright yellow and I added some lemons in there with some greenery and I made a little bow out of some Dollar Tree ribbon. And this is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like after. And I think it is so cute. It's got such a bright, fresh look and I really, really love it. Let me know what you think. Pieces of wood, they belong to my neighbor. They were using them for a temporary path. That's why they are stapled together with that burlap-y. I don't know, I don't know what it is. <laughs> anyway, what I need to do is using these pieces of wood, I need to come up with a 22 by 30 piece. So I'm gonna be cutting 30 inch pieces from these until I get to 22 inches and then I'll use the last one to make my two sides for the noodle board or stove cover so I just wanted you to see the wood it needs to be sanded and cleaned and all of that I have this tool 
It is a staple remover, but a little more heavy duty than an office kind. So you see that part right there, it goes under the staple and then you can lift it up. So for example, there are staples all along this. And so I need to get them all out so that I can get these pieces of wood apart. So that's my first step. Well, there you go. I got them all apart and now I'm gonna sand them down, get them cleaned up, and then I'm gonna start cutting. I'm gonna use my Black & Decker sander. Sorry, there is a dog. <laughs> and I'm going to use the 120 grit sandpaper to start with. I laid all the pieces next to each other. I'm gonna mark on the board where I need to put things and then I'm going to drill my pilot holes all the way down both sides. And then I'm going to start attaching my first slot across. I'm gonna do that on both sides and I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and even. Now I'm sitting on the ground and I'm gonna lay out the rest of them so that I can go ahead and drill the screws right into one on each side. And there we are, I'm at the very last one right now. Very satisfying. And then when I turn it over, there it is. You can see the noodle board. I've sanded the board, all the pieces off camera, and now I'm gonna use my weathered oak Minwax finish. And I'm just gonna put on gloves and use a cloth, and there it is. It's a beautiful color. And then I got these two handles it's from the Habitat for Humanity Restore, and I'm gonna spray paint them with the Rust-Oleum Matte Black. And I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, so what I've done here is I've measured my noodle board. I've added the handles, which I just figured out where the middle of each side was. And then I drew on the back little dots where I should screw in. And I wasn't gonna put a lot of time into sharing that because it just depends on your board and where you wanna put your handles. But my goal here was to center this. The screws come from underneath and then you literally screw it right into these two holes right here. So I found the very center of my noodle board right here. And I wanna make my decal that I'm gonna do 12 by 12 inches. I think that would be the best. Now, the part we've all been waiting for is we get to center the design right on there. And remember, I made that little mark where the center was. And now I'm just carefully laying it down from the center and then pushing out. And I also burnished over the whole thing. And now I'm taking a blade. I wanna cut in between each of those slats so that all of my little pieces will lay down flat. Plus, then I only have to remove one little stripe of the transfer tape at a time which makes this much easier and more accurate and then I can burnish right over this again uh, with my scraper tool or my fingers whatever I want to make sure that my design is on there really well I'm gonna put two coats of the polyurethane over the entire noodle board to seal it I am so happy with how this turned out it was honestly so easy and I love personalizing it with my Cricut definitely worth it and just so custom nobody else has this exact one and I love that I could even make these for gifts if I wanted to. Anyway, you've got to try it. It's so fun and easy. Use the 2021 Farmer's Market Calendar and the month that has the fresh squeezed lemonade. I got this cutting board for $3.99 at the Goodwill. Now I'm going to start sanding it because it's got a couple of spots on it that I don't like. Um, I end up staining it, but I'm going to cut each piece based on those planks. I had a plan when I first started, but I ended up abandoning it. So I start off doing it this way and then I decided to take my X-Acto knife and fussy cut around everything. <laughs> You'll see. There it is. It took a while, but I just put a video or two on and that was it. Now I'm going to take my wood finish by Minwax. It's called Weathered Oak. And I'm just going to go ahead and stain the whole thing. This is after I sanded it. This really helps with getting the tone that I wanted on it and making it look more even. I'm going to do that to both sides. Then I'm going to use my Minwax polyurethane and I'm going to use that for my decoupaging of the stuff I cut out. So I'm going to put a coat underneath lay down, you know, I'm doing it in sections, lay down the letters and the picture, and then kind of push it down lightly with my finger, and then I will go back over the top with the polyurethane. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest of it. I'm just kind of lining up the pieces, you know, where they matched up, because originally I was gonna do them as planks, and then I realized, nah, but I love how it turned out. What do you think? I am getting into cutting boards lately. I'm starting a little display in my kitchen of all different shapes and sizes. So this is one of the many cutting boards that I have to work with, so you'll be seeing more of them. I just love them, I love decorating with them take this wood oval and then I've got these gorgeous rub on transfers by redesigned by Prima. I got them from Chalk It Up Fancy. They have a YouTube channel and a website which I will link below because they're awesome. 
And then I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum chalk linen white paint. I'm going to paint the entire front and back of this piece and dry it with my heat tool. You know I do that just so I can keep moving. <laughs> but you guys know I'm impatient. And now moving on to the back. And then I'm going to take some Waverly ink paint, which is black, and I'm just going to paint around the edges, everything but the very flat top. And then I'm going to take some Mod Podge and cover flat front surface. I'm going to add a sawtooth hanger on the back. Got that at Amazon. And then there's the, the transfer that I decided to use. It's the cow that shows you all the parts of it that are, you know, what we eat that's meat. Well, it's all meat, but you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was super cute for my little farmhouse kitchen. And I'm just trying to find the exact positioning for it. Because once you set it down, you, there's no turning back. So you have to have it in the right spot. I'm going to use a little scraper tool. And of course, I'm not going to show you how long I really did, but I really went over this thing. And then I very slowly pulled it off to make sure everything was adhering. And it did, so I was able to keep going. Otherwise, I would have laid it down and scraped a little more. Now I'm gonna use my hand and burnish. You can also use a very soft cloth for that as well, but you definitely wanna do that step whenever you do any kind of transfers. And then I'm gonna use my Minwax One Coat Polyurethane Top Coat, and I'm just gonna put that all over the entire piece front and back. And you guys, it's so cute, I love it. To do something different. I'm going to take this page. I forgot which calendar it came out of. Sorry about that. But it was just a cute beach sign. And you know what? I'm going to use it as inspiration. I have this little sign. I got it like a long time ago. And I had already painted it white. It used to be gray. And I'm going to remove those little clips. And I'm going to recreate that beach sign as best as I can. And what I'm going to do first is take a pencil. And I'm going to, just by looking at it, try to recreate those letters. And I think I did pretty good pretty good you know it's kind of a rough surface to write on and then I'm gonna have to put my arrow to the right because there's just not enough room down there anyway then I have like a Dremel it's basically actually a kit for doing like acrylic nails but I just put an attachment on the end that would be perfect for this and I am just literally gonna go over all of the letters that I drew out with my little Dremel tool and then I've got the word beach with the arrow on there. And you guys, this was so easy. I could have used a scrap piece of wood. I just happened to have this sign and I thought, you know what, I'm not using it and there's just no reason to keep the clips on it. And look at that, it came out so cute. I'm gonna mix so many different colors of acrylic paint and chalk paint that I'm not even gonna list them because you know what, you can do this any color you want. I just kept messing with it. I bet I even have a paint color at the end that it was without having to mix, but you know what, live and learn. So I just keep adding colors until I kind of get what I like. And like I said, do whatever you want. Use any kind of blue or, or I don't know, just either ocean color or sand color, something that goes along with that coastal theme. And guess what, this is gonna go in my bedroom. Anyway, I'm taking a little paintbrush and I'm actually just dabbing it on because you can't spread paint on this it's too rough of a surface it's very rough wood and so i sped this up because who needs to watch me paint we all know what that looks like but there you go now you can see it and you guys i'm going to dry it with my heat tool from amazon and i just love this already and then because the paint went over the edges a little i'm just going to take the dremel and go back over the edges and clean up the paint and look at it i honestly love this one you'll have to let me know what you think it's so cute and I just got inspired by a picture on a calendar from Dollar Tree. Take one of those ovals and a little home sign cut out of wood. And then I picked up this little doggy tail at Ikea. I've done a previous craft with them. I'll link it in my description box. And then the burnt umber paint by Apple Barrel and the linen white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I'm gonna sand my wood round down and then I'm gonna remove the tag. And then I'm gonna paint the entire front and sides with the linen white paint. I didn't do the back right away, and I really don't know why, because I did that on all the other ones, but I do go back and do it later. So take a little piece of a drop cloth that I had cut up, and I'm gonna wrap it around my finger, and I'm gonna use it to rub on the burnt umber paint as though it were a stain. And once I get it on and it's fully covered, I will take the side of that piece and I will rub off any excess, and it will create a stain-like you know, finish for this, and that's exactly what I wanted. It also doesn't smell and it's so much less expensive than buying stain. So I love this color for that.
Now I'm gonna take the little plaque, I'm gonna kind of position the homeward where I want it and the little doggy butt. And then I'm gonna measure, because I wanna put a nail in that's deep enough that it won't keep the little doggy butt off the surface of it, but it also holds it in place while the glue is drying. Just an extra security, so I'm just gonna hammer that in once I figure out where. And I know exactly how deep I need it to be because I'm testing it right now, and you can see right there, I made it so it goes all the way to the surface of the plaque. Then I looked at the back, I put my sawtooth hanger on, and I realized I need to paint this, <laughs> so I do. I paint it and then I quickly dry it with my heat tool. Now I'm gonna take the Beacon Fabric Tac glue and I'm gonna put it all across the back of the letters, and then I'll take a little brush and spread it out and make sure I don't have any you know, pieces that are kind of like hanging between the letters and then I will attach that to the front of the little plaque. These little plaques are so versatile. You can do so many different things with them. And I'm gonna put that down, give it a little pressure, and it will dry very quickly. Next, I'm gonna take some E6000, and I'm gonna put that on the back of my little doggy butt hook. And I'm gonna leave gaps between each little dot that I put on, because that's where the hot glue is gonna go just to help it dry faster so that I can keep working. So this was a triple whammy, a nail, E6000, and hot glue. It's not going anywhere. Now I'm making this for my mom because when I made my other one with the three little doggy butts, she wanted one so bad. By the way, she doesn't have any animals, she just wants it. And then I noticed I forgot to do that little back part that's hanging over, so I went with her number and I got that taken care of. And that's it. How cute is this? I absolutely love it. I'm sure my mom's gonna love it. And you have to let me know what you think. For this thrift flip, I have this sign, and it's kind of old-fashioned, like the 70s or 80s maybe, and it was $3, but a really nice solid piece of wood. It already had a wire hanger on it. You cannot beat that, and some holes in the back. And But it's got this hanging thing on the front, and I didn't really want that. So I, my mom has this little dish towel that I got her because she really loves cats, even though she doesn't have one anymore. And I said I could turn that into something to hang on her wall. So this piece is going to work for that. I'm going to take off that heart, and I'll use it for in the future. I'm going to take out those two little hangers that were on there and fill them with a little bit of wood filler. And then I'm going to sand it down. And then I realized, oh, I haven't cleaned this yet. So I got my crud cutter out, and I cleaned it real quick. And once that's done, I am going to paint it with my Rust-Oleum Chalk Linen White Paint, the whole thing front and back, because I do like to finish the back of my projects. And there it is, all nicely painted. It took two coats. And then I'm gonna fussy cut the cat out of this picture. And it's gonna, I just, I'm not even gonna worry about those whiskers, because I'm gonna do something to make them come back to life. I'm gonna use my Beacon Fabric Tac glue to attach it, because that's a really good glue for things like this. And it just sticks pretty quickly. You can move it around a little bit, but it, you know, you've only got a small amount of time, but it's not like hot glue where you have to stop immediately and not adjust it. So I just did it in sections to make sure that I could get it really nice and straight and not get any little wrinklies. And then I'm just gonna kind of burnish it and make sure it's laying down flat. And then I have this little piece of wood that was from something from Dollar Tree that I had cut off the excess. I'm gonna paint it with the white chalk paint again, just to have a background. And then I'm gonna cut out the words, I'm a normal cat lady, you're a crazy people person. And it had a little paw on there too. So I'm just gonna use the, the Beacon Fabric Tac glue again and put that down. And then I'm gonna use that same glue because it works on wood as well. And then I'm at a little bit of hot glue so it will stay right away and I can keep working on my project and put that right up on top. Now, I wanted to embellish this a little bit more. So I have this golden white twine that I got at, the, at Target. And I'm just gonna cut out pieces that match with where the whiskers would be. And I'm only gonna glue them to the part that's on the cat's face. And then I'm gonna let the rest kind of be free. So it becomes like a three-dimensional thing with those whiskers. And I think it's super cute. And then I cut out a bunch of little paws in that fabric. And I'm gonna glue each one of those down using my Fabri-Tac glue. And just kind of randomly place them around the cat. And that's it. And this one, it's really, really cute. Nice, hefty sign. And reminder, that's what it looked like first. And I love it. My mom loves it. She's already got it up in her bedroom to add to her cat collection of pictures. And she's got statues and you name it. She loves cats. She just doesn't want to have one anymore. She's had them for years. 
Let me know what you think of this one. This was a really fun kind of experiment for me. So I basically thrifted these two shelves from my mom's house. She had them, but she wasn't using them and she needed a little table to hold a smokeless grill. So I had the idea of putting them together and then putting a surface on the top that would create this little table with the shelves underneath it. And I had these two extra pieces left over from a desk that I assembled, but I didn't need those pieces. So that worked out perfectly as a nice top surface. And so what I'm going to do is clean it off, of course, with my crud cutter, like I always do. It had been sitting in her apartment for quite a while and it was very dirty and dusty. Then I'm gonna take my agave chalk paint from Waverly and I'm gonna paint the whole thing. Now I'm not gonna do more than one coat because I want a little bit of the wood to show through. It'll save me distressing. And there it is, and you can still see some of the wood little by little, you know, around, and it's not perfect and that's what she wanted. Then I have this scrap piece of wood I got at Lowe's for free. And I'm just going to take my square ruler and I'm gonna measure, because what I need is two supports to go underneath those pieces where they come together. I'm gonna take my little box miter saw and I'm just going to cut two pieces out of this that are roughly between like 11 and 11 and a half inches and there they are. And then I've got this sanding, I guess it's like a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna sand the whole thing. And then I'm gonna take the agave paint so it matches the two shelf pieces. I'm only gonna do the top and then all around the edges. I won't do the bottom because that's gonna be attached. And I'm gonna add a clear coat of polyurethane to the, the surfaces that I painted. Now we'll set that aside and I'm gonna take the two pieces that I'm gonna use for the very top and you can see what they look like. And I want them to be more on the white side, but I don't mind if the grain shows through. So I'm gonna use my Kills All Purpose White Primer for that, because since I'm gonna do a clear coat over the top, it doesn't matter that it's a primer, and you can see through it if you don't do too heavy of a coat. And that's perfect, because she wanted it to look a little distressed. And I did a little underneath, because that would show you know, what goes around the outside of the shelves. Now, to glue them together, I'm gonna to start with some packing tape. This is like a hack. So I'm gonna put one piece of, of the packing tape all the way down the seam, and then four little ones across. That holds it in place so they stay even. And then you'll see in a second here how I'm gonna add the wood glue. I'm gonna turn this piece over now, and it does bend in the middle, as you can see. And then what I'm going to do is take my tight bond original wood glue you can get that on amazon but i also got it at walmart and i'm going to add some right in there but see you can just fold it like that put the glue in and it holds the whole thing in place and you can do it with one hand holding it in one hand with the glue which i thought was the best way to do it now i'm going to close it and you know push it together very tight and then i'm just going to take a paper towel and clean off the excess glue and then i will seal all of that with the polyurethane so now you can see those two pieces that I added as supports under the shelves. That will hold the two pieces together under two of the shelves so that I can attach the top and it won't move on me. And it all matches and you can't even see it because it's on the underneath. So there is the piece assembled. Now, by the way, each one of those pieces were not even. So if you see gaps, I couldn't do anything about it because whoever made this originally, it was handmade, it wasn't even. So I took some screws and the two I already made the holes and I pre-drill holes and I just couldn't hold everything in film so you won't see me doing the drilling. So reminder, here's what they look like before and here's what it looks like now. Now I just styled it outside with some decor on it to take a picture, but at her house she's putting that smokeless grill. She loves it, it fits perfectly in her space and it worked out great. This piece has some weird dents in it. They're never the same, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna use one of those oval thicker pieces and this little succulent a planter that had a magnet on the back and then a succulent, it's not the one that came with it. And then my moss and celery chalk paint by Waverly. Around the outside edge, not the very top, I'm gonna use the moss colored. I'm gonna dry it with my heat tool so I can move on. Then I'm gonna take the celery color and I'm gonna do the whole front. And then on the back, I'm gonna do the moss again. I just thought that would look really nice. And of course, I like to finish my backs. And then I'm gonna take some polyurethane finish and I'm going to put it all over the entire piece. Then I'm going to take a little sawtooth hanger that I got from Amazon. Just going to put it on there before I go any further. Now I'm going to take some of the rope that I got from Walmart and I'm just going to hot glue it around that edge. That way I didn't have to be so perfect about my painting on the edge. So just one strand all the way around. 
I'm going to use hot glue to attach that. Then I'm going to take that little container and I'm going to use the hot glue and I'm just going to put the rope or twine all the way around it and I'm just going to keep going around and around. Um, actually, I'm going to go around the first time and then I'm going to go just like a U-shaped over and over until it gets to the very middle and that finishes it off, which I'll skip ahead here so you don't have to watch me gluing everything. But I did want a piece along the back there so you wouldn't see the plastic. So then I'm gonna cut that piece off and see how I went around and around, but the edges at the top are rough. So I'm gonna put some more pieces just around the top to kind of finish that off. It'll take about three pieces around to make it look done. And it's so cute. So I'm gonna hot glue that right there onto the little oval. And that little copper looking flower, I didn't end up using that. And then I'm gonna play around and see which is the best way to put my succulent in. And then I'm gonna take a combination of reindeer moss and a little bit of the green moss. I'm just gonna put it inside the little container or vase. And then I'm gonna put the succulent right in there. Now, after this was done, I felt like it needed to be a little different. So I then took another one of those little containers and I painted it with the moss color and then I dry brushed with the white over the top and around the other on the outside. And I'm gonna use that other one. I'm gonna make a little beehive out of it. Can you see it? Anyway, this was easy. Let me know what you think or which one is your favorite. Two signs from the Dollar Tree, this rectangular one and this kind of word bubble one. And then I am also going to use some of these really cool stickers from the Dollar Tree. They're like risen up a little and I'm going to use those little corner pieces. So I had needed two batches of them to get all four corners. I'm going to remove the twine from this sign. I'm not going to be using it, but I will save it, of course. And then I'm going to remove the tags and I'm also going to remove the little sawtooth hanger on the word bubble sign. Took a little heat gun to get that thing off. For some reason, that was on there good. So I sanded it down just a little to get rid of all the stickiness. And I'm gonna get rid of that little edge of the bubble sign. I just want it to be an oval. So I'm just gonna take my utility knife and kind of score it many times and then bo on both sides. And then I can just kind of bend it off and then clean up the edges with my utility knife and also sanding around there. It's super easy to do. Now I'm not gonna take the word dreams off because I'm gonna have that covered up. And now I just want to figure out how wide it is and how tall it is. I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum chalked linen white paint. And but before I do that, I almost forgot I'm going to fill in the little holes for the hanger because we won't need it. And now I will go ahead and paint it. And I did do two coats to make sure you couldn't see any of that brown. And then I went around the edges as well. I'm gonna use my Waverly ink color, which is just black. And I'm just gonna do around the edges of the rectangular from the back side because you're gonna, I'm gonna put the oval in the middle and you won't see it. I'm gonna lightly sand both pieces and then I will hot glue the oval right over the center of the rectangle. Now again, I'm getting some measurements because I want to make a frame, but first I made a stencil using my Cricut of the world. You guys, I just love this so much. I'm placing the stencil down and then I'm going to use three different paint colors and do an ombre effect. I'm going to use Ocean Lagoon and Pool from Waverly. I love this. I'm going to use a piece of tape to section off the area. So the top is going to be the darkest and it'll gradually get lighter. So that's the ocean color. I'm using a makeup sponge just to dab it on. I'm gonna take that off. I have to be super careful because that there's parts of the world that are really narrow there. <laughs> then I'm gonna apply another piece of tape and I'm gonna do the middle color. It was Lagoon. Then I'm gonna take a wet paintbrush. I'm gonna use my mister to get it wet and I'm gonna kind of smudge up the line between the two. Then I will take off the bottom piece of tape and I will use the pool color chalk paint for the very bottom. And again, just dabbing it on. I don't want it to bleed. The stencil's adhesive, but it could still bleed if you're not careful. And again, I'm gonna use a wet paintbrush and blur the line between, and that creates the ombre. I absolutely love this look. It's so cool. 
Now I'm just gonna pull off the stencil very carefully and look at that. Oh, it looks so good. I, it's exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna take my white paint and just touch up any little speckles or spots that I got and I'm gonna use my heat tool to dry it. So I'm gonna be putting another decal over the top. I use my Cricut to make, oh, the places you'll go. I just love that saying, you know, I think that's uh, Dr. Seuss. And I'm just gonna put that over the map. Unfortunately, it did take off a little bit of my paint, but I will go back in and touch that back up, no problem. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I'm a big traveler, it's my favorite hobby. Uh, actually, before crafting even, and now I'm just doing my touch up. I got some scrap wood at Lowe's for free. I cut them into pieces that would fit around the rectangle, which you know I measured that already. I'm gonna use some Waverly Antique Wax. And I do spray a little bit of water on the wood to make this glide a little better. And that way I don't have to worry about it going right into the wood super deep. So I'm just gonna do all sides of the wood. And there I am kind of positioning it, dry fitting it to see how it's gonna look. Then I'm gonna take some hot glue and I'm gonna put the two sides on first. and then I will attach the bottom and the top pieces. Now there are some gaps because of the way I cut it, but I wanted that on purpose and you'll see why in just a minute. So now I've got this greenery that I got at Amazon. It's in my Amazon store. I believe this is the eucalyptus. And I just cut up some little pieces of that pick and because there's a gap there, I'm gonna use it almost like a little garden window type thing. So I'm gonna hot glue those pieces after I, you know, I'll kind of dry fit them first and see what I like and then hot glue them in. I'm gonna put some craft paper on the back because one, there's an ugly sign there. Two, I hate to leave my things unfinished. And then I put those little stickers on the corners and then I found this other cute one that says Explorers. And I put that one right between where the two two pieces of greenery meet in the middle. And you guys, I love this one. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to put it up in my house. I really, really love it. I hope you do too. And it's on trend with this travel inspired piece. That makes me feel like I'm with the times here. Take one of the oval rounds, of course. <laughs> and then I found these lemons at Ikea and they were on sale from $4.99 to $3.59. And there's quite a few in there and I thought that was a pretty good deal. And then I've got some, you know, little leaves that left over from some picks and some other ones. And then my burnt umper paint by Apple Barrel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mister that I got on Amazon gonna get a little bit of the burnt umber paint. I'm gonna mist all over my little wood oval and then I'm just gonna start putting the burnt umber on there. And what it does is it just glides over the top and it waters it down and then you can move it around very easily and get the desired look that you want. So then I turned it around, got the other side with some of the mist and just continued on. And you just keep adding more and more of the burnt umber paint until you get the look you want. If it's too light, add more of the paint. If it's too dark, add more of the water. And this is such a nice way of doing this to give it that really nice stained look, but without the wood absorbing it too quickly. I'm gonna take my heat tool and dry it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the back, but I don't need to be quite as careful about it because the back you know, you won't see it very much. And then I'm gonna put the um, polyurethane one coat all over the front and back. Once that dries, I'm gonna take these larger wood beads that I got on Amazon, and I'm going to put them, there's no corners, but if there were, you know, put four of them on the bottom. And I'm gonna use a combination of E-Success and hot glue so that it will dry right away with the hot glue and then stay very well with the E-6000. And here we go. And I'm just gonna do that with all four of what becomes my little legs, but they're the little wooden beads. And I'm gonna keep them natural. I think it's a nice contrast. Now I'm gonna put the hole against the wood so that when it's sitting down, you don't see the bottom hole because it's laying on top of it. It's the best way I think to put them. Plus it gives it a little bit of more of a flat surface to lay on. And I can squeeze that hot glue right into that hole so it oozes out when I turn it over and that'll help with the hold. There we go, so now I have a little riser. And I could have made it taller, but I like those beads a lot. So I'm gonna take three of these lemons now, I thought they were gonna be styrofoam and I was gonna cut them. Now listen to this. Oh my gosh, had no idea. They were like golf balls, seriously. They had, they felt like golf balls. 
So now I'm going to hot glue this greenery right on into the middle and then I'm going to tack down each of the four leaves because I want them to lay a little more flat. The lemons are going to be sitting up high enough. And then I'm going to do again E6000 and hot glue combination with the three lemons and place them where I want. And then those last two little greenery picks, I'm just going to kind of hot glue them in between some of the lemons. This is so cute. You can set this on a shelf, on a tear tray. It's just adorable, honestly. It could be on another riser, you know. It's just, it's so cute and festive and bright. I love it for my kitchen. And I cannot wait to style it with all of the rest of my spring things. And if I want, this could stay up through the summer as well because it's just so bright and cheery. I don't know what it is about lemons. They're just, it's like lemons and oranges. They're just so fresh. Anyway, I really love that look. And I don't know, just makes you kind of happy. Makes me think of lemonade. Tell me what you think. How would you have done this? Would you do the same thing I did? Or would you have made it taller? It's also something that you could make two levels if you wanted by adding something taller between. I have this bowl. I don't know if it's teak, but it reminds me of teak. Got it for 50 cents. I actually got two of them. And see those little dandelion blue stickers? I'm going to use those from the Dollar Tree or decals. They're so cute. Took off the stickers, cleaned the bowl with my cred cutter real good. It's amazing. Things don't look dirty, but when you clean them, they really are. So you always have to clean them from the thrift store. At least I want to do that for sure. I'm sure most of you do too. Okay, once that was done and I'll dry, I took some painter's tape. And it just went up around the very top edge. I wanted to just make one little area white. I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. And I'm just going to paint from the tape line down to where it naturally kind of ends before it angles off towards the bottom. And I just thought that would look super, super cute. Did a couple coats, dried it with my heat tool from Amazon. And now the best part, removing the tape. Gosh, I love that so much. Anyway, it just looks great. Now it's not perfect because it's round, but you know what? I'm not trying to have perfection. I just wanted kind of a two-tone effect, color blocking, if you will. I'm gonna put polyurethane finish over just the white paint just to seal that in. And then once it's dry, I'm gonna take my little dandelion stickers or decals. I'm just gonna use kind of the smaller versions of them. There's two different small sizes. I'm gonna just start putting them around and then I'll fill in some of the gaps as I go. And I really like the way it looks. And then I'm just going to cover it with the polyurethane again. And then I have three corks that I was given by my stepdaughter. And I'm going to paint those in the linen white paint again, except for the part I'm going to glue on to the bottom. And it took a couple coats, by the way, to do that. And then I'm just going to use some E6000 in hot glue, like I usually do when I want something to really stay. So I'm putting the E6000 right in the middle and then the hot glue around it. And I'll do that for all three of the legs. And I just thought that made it look a little different to have the legs on it. I thought it was super, super cute. This is such an easy project. All you need is a bowl, paint a little bit, and some decals. And I love it. And you can stage this in so many ways. I think it's great. And the inside of the bowl is still the way it was, so you can use it for anything. this flat oval wood piece. It's not as thick as the other one. And I'm going to show you the difference right here between the two, but they're both still oval and they're still wood. You can find these at Family Dollar also. And then I ordered these half beads on Amazon. They're in my Amazon store. And then these are stickers I got at Walmart. And then I have some rub-on transfer letters from the Dollar Tree. And what I'm gonna do is create a sign to put outside of our bathroom. It's gonna say the loo, which I think is super cute. It's what they say in England and I just love that. I'm gonna use my heat tool from Amazon to take off the tags. And then I'm going to use my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree to sand down the wood. And now I'm just gonna take my half beads and place them all around. I'm gonna kind of start with the four edges, if you will, and then work my way in and try to make it so that they'll be evenly spaced. And then I'm gonna use some wood glue and I'm just gonna place them one at a time. I'm gonna use a little brush to put it on there so I don't get a lot of excess. I'm just gonna go ahead and place them all the way around until I get them all. And then the last one I had to sand around the edges a little bit to make it fit because it was super tight, but it worked. 
And there it is, all done. Now I'm gonna take my Rust-Oleum chalked linen white paint. I'm gonna do two coats on the front and back, and I'm gonna work my way through all those beads, you know, all around the edges and in the little nooks and crannies. And then once it all dries, I'm gonna use my polyurethane uh, clear coat to go ahead and put that on the top. But first, I'm gonna take my letters. I wanna use my Waverly ink chalk paint, which is black. I'm gonna do two coats on the letters, get all the way around the edges, and I use tape to attach them to that paper so they don't move around, especially when I dry them. And then I'll do that second coat. And there is that polyurethane. I'm gonna put that on there as well. And here we go with that for the, uh, the oval piece. I just wanna make sure that there's a nice smooth surface for my rub-on transfers to stick to. And I'm gonna use a little ruler and just try to find my center. And with these, I'm just using my fingernail because they're so small. And then I use my little Cricut weeding tool to pull off the plastic. And then always remember to rub down on top and burnish them so that there's no edges that are still sticking up. Because believe it or not, if there are, it can become a problem later. Now I'm gonna position my word Lou and just try to figure out how I'm gonna put that on there. And I'm gonna use my Beacon Fabric Tac Glue to attach those right there. That way I control how much goes on and there won't be anything like really oozing out of the sides. I didn't wanna do hot glue for this. I really wanna make sure it's stuck on there long-term. This is so cute. I've got this um, piece that can go on the wall and then you can attach the sign so it's sticking out, not flat on the wall or on the door, but sticking out. I don't know if the piece I have is gonna work. If not, I'll try to rig something. So for this video, I won't be able to show you that hanging up on the wall, but in the meantime, at least you'll get to see it. This was super easy. It's so cute and I absolutely love it. I've seen people do powder room signs or bathroom, but I thought the loo was a little different and I absolutely love it. I hope you guys like it too. That's the piece I was talking about. It's a very heavy metal, so I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I may have to pick something a little bit lighter, but that's how it would look sideways. taking this thrifted item. It looks like it was originally from Hobby Lobby. I got it for $3. It was $7.99. And then here are the Dollar Tree stickers or decals that I'm going to use. I'm just going to take those flowers around the edges of that one. I had cut it up before. And then ballet slipper chalk paint and uh, Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. There are all the pieces cut. I'm going to take the ballet slipper. I'm just going to start painting it all over the pig. There it is. I'm going to dry it with my heat tool. And then I'm going to go through and just kind of clean up all the white. It's like a very thin metal, but it was kind of dirty looking, but with a brown. And I'm going to use a different color to do it. I'm going to take a nail file, also from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to start going around the edges to bring back out those rough edges, but that wasn't enough. So I'm using a little sanding block with a 60 grit sandpaper, and that seems to be helping me. But I'm going to also take this black acrylic paint from Apple Barrel, and just use a little edge of a foam brush and go around. And uh, now that's a lot more than I wanted, but I am gonna go back over it with some white just to tone it down a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to do just a little bit of black. You know what I mean? Anyway, I will fix that and I end up really loving it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take those, uh, we'll just call them decals. Anyway, I'm gonna take those decals and I'm gonna start figuring out where I want them. I want it to look like the pig is walking by a fence with like flowers all around it. So I'm just gonna cut the edges off with my um, blade and I'm gonna cut wherever it makes contact with another edge so it kind of lays flat. If I have to cut them up into little pieces, I will do that. I'm just, you can do this any way you want, okay? And you like hanging over the edge like that one was and I really like it. And then I got a suggestion from a friend, uh, Leonette at DIY Beauty on Purpose. I was showing her my pig and she said, add some real flowers for like a 3D effect. And I thought, oh my gosh, what a great idea. So first I added a butterfly. Now I'm also gonna put Leonette's channel down in the description box for you to check her out because she always has great ideas. I love bouncing ideas off of her. And now I'm gonna take this little, I think this is boxwood and I'm just gonna cut up teeny little pieces. And then I have these flower petals because everything was getting too green almost. So I got these flower petals that had different colors of pink or magenta. And I kind of cut them off of a flower, poked a hole in the middle, and now I'm putting these little wild kind of greenery pieces that I painted pink and added some more white on them in a minute here. I'm gonna hot glue those on, and there I am adding that white. They were just too pink like the pig. I was trying to get them to stand out a little bit more. 
And then I don't, I forgot what these are called, but I just cut up little pieces of these. And then I started putting the boxwood on the back. That way it would poke through every opening on the back. You would see it. And also along the edges. Anyway, I did go a little crazy. I'll, I'll admit it. It was one of those times where I might've needed to stop, but I didn't. But I just like it so much. It's really cute. It's turning out a little bit shabby chic, but I think it can still work with farmhouse. Now I'm gonna go in with the white. Just put a little bit and then smear it with my hand. I figured I have to wash my hands anyway. And um, just use up the last of the little stickers. And I gotta tell you, I really, really like this one. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's so adorable. I've got this sheer pink ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna put it through the holes, hot glue it down to the back, and then put another piece of ribbon across that middle part of the fence just to secure it. But then I like my back's finished, so I ended up taking the pink and I painted the whole back. Not sure if I really needed to do that, but okay, it's done. Let me know what you guys think. What would you have done? this little three drawer dresser here. You can see, you can look at that. <laughs> Not too great, huh? So I'm gonna refinish this. I'm definitely a beginner. I've only painted furniture. I haven't really done much else to it before. But I'm gonna try some maybe fun things with this one and we'll see what happens. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it. Got a sponge right here. Got a little bit of simple clean. I'm not gonna use a lot of it because I don't want any residue, but you know, it's dusty in places. I just emptied it out. We'll move on from there. We're basically gonna be learning together. So let's have fun. <laughs> So remember when I showed you that the drawers were looking kind of rickety? Well, these guys are not in very good shape. This on this side in particular. So it looks like I'm gonna have to reinforce those. This side, they seem pretty solid, but I'm gonna make sure, because these drawers were definitely rickety. So I think that would look really cool for this to be, if I pack up a little here, just to have some drawers and maybe have like an open shelf area. I really only use two of the drawers right now, so that would be easy to do, and then it could kind of be decorative too. This piece right now is gonna go into our bedroom, which is not a farmhouse style as much. It's more coastal. I just find the beach really relaxing. I'm just thinking about that right now. In the meantime, this is all cleaned up now. It's time to remove the knobs and anything else that needs to come off of this. Oh, it looks like we have a little visitor over here. Sophie, have you come to visit? Yep. Say hi, Sophie. Yep. I am going to be doing something on top here uh, with some skewers to create like a really cool texture. I am going to sand this. and then brush off all the sawdust. Now we've got it sanded, and I found these skewers, there were a hundred of them at Dollar General for only a dollar. So that definitely beats the Dollar Tree. I got quite a few of these packs, so I'm gonna go ahead and play with this. I'm gonna use my square to take measurements, and then I'm gonna cut out my skewer sticks. I'm looking at these natural lines here and I'm thinking about like the look of reclaimed wood, which is coastal. And so I think I may use the skewers to fill in these gaps to divide and then I can do different colored reclaimed wood, driftwood looking, you know, that look, right? That coastal beachwood look. And the colors I think will go perfect with my room. It's going to be easier too. So this is a beginning type of a thrift flip. So I need to keep it more like that. I always tend to go way over the top. Let's rein it in and work on that. For this, I'm going to use Pool and Celery by Waverly. That's chalk paint. And then the Rust-Oleum Linen White chalk paint, a mister, and a foam brush. I'm going to take my foam brush and I dipped it in water and then kind of squeezed it out, but it's still pretty wet. And the reason is I want to do more of a white wash with the white chalk paint to start off with. And I can also spray it down with my little mister to keep it thin enough. So like, let me show you, even with the water on the brush, this is still pretty white. So I'm going to spray it. And hopefully, yeah, there we go. That's gonna thin it out even more. And then we can, cause I wanna see the wood through. This is just gonna be like a base coat here before I add the color. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just keep spraying a little bit of water here and there. See, I haven't even re-dipped my brush yet because the water is making this spread 
even further. See that wood grain right through there? I don't know if you can, but it's definitely there. You know, it's really what you like. So if you want it more white, it wouldn't do as much of the water. If you want it a little bit more of the color showing and less of the white, obviously you're gonna wanna do more of the water. So you're just, what a whitewash is, is really just washing down a paint color with water and that's why it's called a white wash even if the color isn't white you would still do it the same way yeah i think keeping this wet is making all the difference and then every so often i'm just adding a little teeny bit of the white char paint to my foam brush so question for you guys when you use a foam brush, you know, eventually they kind of wear out. Do you save the little wooden piece? I save them every single time. <laughs> and then I use them to make legs on things, or if I ever need some little pieces, I can just cut them. So definitely let me know in the comments what you do with yours, or do you just throw them away? So now I want to make sure everything's going in one direction now that I've got this covered. I don't want to see anything other than the lines going straight across. So I always do this right at the end. I go like all the way across with my brush, and that way it looks really nice and everything goes in the same direction, especially when you have a wood grain. Not worrying about the grooves because I'm going to be covering those with, with the skewers. And now that it's not quite as close to the camera, you can get a better look. I've whitewashed all the way around and parts of the inside, and there's the top. You can see the wood grain better now. In that other shot, it was just too close to the camera. So now I'm going to take my pool color chalk paint by Waverly, and I'm going to water it down a little bit, and then I'm going to start with a plank right here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. See how it's just slightly see the color. Oh, that's beautiful. That looks perfect like coastal look that I'm going for. I have some contact paper from the Target Dollar Spot and I've already cut it to size pretty close and then what I'm going to do is peel back just the top portion, lay it down so it's already in the right direction in the right spot and I'm going to slowly pull the backing paper out from underneath as I smooth on top to get rid of any bubbles or wrinkles. And I'm going to speed it up but I'm just going to continue the same process all the way till the entire side is covered. I'm going to do this to both sides of the drawer. I'm going to use my brayer that I got from Amazon and smooth it out and make sure I really got all the bubbles. I love this tool for this kind of stuff and decoupage. I'm going to take a nail file and just in a downward motion go straight across the edge and then it will just come loose so easily. It's a very nice clean edge and I love doing it this way. I'm going to do that to all the edges on both sides and then here it is finished. And then I'm going to take that same contact paper and measure the inside of the drawer to cut a piece to fit right there. Same procedure to put it on and then I'll have a nice lined drawer. I'll use my brayer to smooth that out once I have it all attached. And then I will take a blade and go around the edges and make sure I cut away any excess that's going up the sides. Next I'm going to use my miter shears from Amazon and I'm going to cut the skewers into the sizes that I needed. I've already pre-measured. I'm going to put some painter's tape down so the sticky side is up, lay my skewers on it. I'm going to spray them with the water and then I'm going to whitewash those as well. Now I'm going to use some wood glue and I'm going to attach my skewers into all of the grooves on the front. And I've had to cut different size pieces to make that work. I'm going to file the edges away so there's no pointy edges. And that's going to be a wrap for tonight because I'm tired. Well, it's another day. Unfortunately, it's raining again. I've been wanting to come out here and sand this thing because it's too big to sand in the house and it's been raining. And now look, you guys, this is the space I have. You can see on the ground, that's where it's dry. So that's where the sanding is gonna have to happen. So here we are. And now we're gonna sand around the outside. We gotta shore up some of the inside, the drawer on the top, and then two baskets on each of these. And I'm gonna have to put a little platform there to hold the basket. So I'll just show you as I go. Alrighty. I just got a small sander here, glassy decker, nothing special. I think it's a, just an orbital sander. And I just put a 60 grit piece of sandpaper around on it. Now, the only reason I'm sanding is because I want to do like a whitewash and I don't want any of the seal that's left on this. I'm not trying to get it down to the bare wood, just to the place where I won't have the sealer on top. just see the top with the 60 grit sandpaper and I purposely did it unevenly because I think when I whitewash it that's gonna look so good just to have that kind of uneven texture it'll make the 
distressing look so natural. Anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'm gonna get the sides and the edges done and uh, be back. I have got my sanding done. I did a little bit less sanding on the sides. It's still sanded. And of course the top, I did a lot because you're gonna see that more. And there's the other side. So I need to shore that one up. And this side, we have more of a mess. See this? <laughs> really bad. And then this one is also loose and the one on the bottom is also loose. We've got the top drawer that is gonna stay here. Then I need to put a piece of probably like an MDF type thing, nothing fancy, uh, that sits right across here so I can set two baskets here and then another piece right here because the bottom, as you see, is there's nothing. Okay, and this, I mean, this is a, not an expensive little dresser. In fact, if I turn it around, the back is just MDF, you see? I'm not worried about it. It's gonna be against the wall. You really won't see it. There was some water damage down here which I sanded and now you don't really see it anymore. I just want the structure to be sound because the rest I think is just gonna look like it belongs. Okay, so let me go get my tools and see what I can do to shore up those braces. Before I go any further, I did decide to take a 240 grit sandpaper and just go over the top and the two sides lightly just because I was using a 16, just in case I have any rough little spots. I'm gonna do that right now. All right, I just did the 240 grit sandpaper. So of course it did take off a little more, but it is so smooth. Oh my gosh, super smooth. I'm gonna have to wipe it off with a damp cloth. And I just did the parts that will really be showing in the sides. And the only thing I did on the back is just this little edge right here. You know, I don't want it to be rough and everything else look good. I don't know what I'll do with that. I mean, I guess I could just paint it white because it sure is ugly. And again, not that anyone is going to see it. Okay. Time to clean it off and then we will work on the repairs. So I've got my wood glue here and I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys situated and let them dry a little bit. And then I will definitely come back with my brad nailer and take care of that. Cause I wanna make sure it's really, really stable. And that, especially for the top drawer, well, even for the others, because the baskets, once they're full, they're gonna carry some weight. So we gotta be careful about that. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this part. It's raining, I can't push this out too far. I'll try, it's all right here. We'll, we'll hopefully you'll see it. All right, I think I'm gonna have to go get some clamps, you guys. They're, they're not staying. All right, I've got two of them on this side. I'm gonna need another one on that side, but I only have two of these. So I'll have to wait till these are a little bit more secure and then I'll let it go. This one is definitely starting to set up, so it's not going anywhere. While that's happening, I think I'm gonna start some painting, you know, around the outside because that way that can be drying while I move on. I like to keep going. I'm gonna use the Rust-Oleum Chalked paint in the linen white color. This is the ultra matte. I'm also going to be using a mister. I don't know if you can see it hopefully. Yeah, there it is. Um, and this will keep the paint wet and for whitewashing you want to water down your paint. So I'm going to be spraying this as I paint to get just the exact look I want. If it's too watery, I'll add more paint. If it's not watery enough or thin enough, I'll add more of this. And then I'm actually going to use um, a brush I haven't opened yet. It's from DIY Arts. I do have these in my Amazon store. My daughter actually bought me this set uh, for Christmas a couple years ago and I got to tell you, I love them and this with this little ball on the end this is going to be nice for painting a bigger surface so I am very excited to use this one. I've used other ones and I've been very happy with them. It's got a really nice not stiff but firm brush and I think that's going to look nice because I don't mind if it shows texture when I'm whitewashing because again driftwood reclaim wood that whole coastal look it's not supposed to look brand new. I'm going to do this the same way that I did the front of that drawer so I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly I'm just whitewashing. Now I am not an expert in this was super easy to do. I think anybody can actually accomplish this. Okay, I'm gonna work some more. Okay, so just a quick look at how it is so far. I've got the one side. I'll I probably do a little bit of a touch-up. And now the top. So it's looking really good and we'll just keep moving on. Just wanted to give you a quick progress report here. And it started raining again, so I need to be super careful. <laughs> Luckily I'm doing a whitewash, so it's not like thick paint that will get really humid and not dry well. Alrighty, so it's time to attach the broken pieces with the, my brad nailer. It paint first because I'm impatient and I wanted to do it. I will just fill in the little holes and then touch up the paint, no big Deal. Okay guys, so we're going to take our brad nailer now and reinforce. I did a couple practice ones, going to have to fill that in. Brand new at doing this, my first time using it, literally. There we go. 
Okay, so this top one is reinforced now. I'm gonna do the same thing with where all of these braces are for where the drawers were. Gonna do that off camera. Okay, I've got my wood filler and I have made, you know, quite a few holes because I'm new at this and I was trying to line it up with this piece underneath and there's no way to see it. We will literally use the wood filler here and then I'll go ahead and use my putty knife, make sure I'm getting pretty good coverage here. And then when it dries a little bit, we will sand that off. Okay, I'm gonna fill all the holes now. So I just took this Zinser Bullseye 123 Primer. It's white and I did it on just the inside. So I just wanted to show you, I've got all of the holes filled and you know, painted back over and it's just a really nice whitewash. And then here's the other side. So now I just need to cut my pieces of MDF and paint them white and then attach them to the bottom and the middle shelf there. And then I can put my drawer back in. Unfortunately, I ordered the baskets and I don't think they're gonna make it in time for the video. So I will I will show you some pictures of what it would look like. I'll try to, maybe I can superimpose it. We'll see how good my editing skills are. Anyway, I just wanna show you where I am so far. I thought I was going to use some really thin MDF, but I remembered that I had these thicker ones that I was going to make some porch signs out of. So I just cut it to the measurement that I needed. It was already 12 inches wide, which was, or deep, which was exactly what I needed. So I just cut it to 21 inches. I made two of them. I only took one board to do it and even had some to spare. And it was already painted white. It doesn't get any better than that. Just showing you now how I'm putting them in on those little braces. And that could not have been easier. That could have been a much bigger job. But fortunately, I keep things. <laughs> and so see, sometimes keeping things in your stash really pays off like it did this time. Speaking of my stash, I had these cute little knobs that I got from the Dollar Tree of all places and they were perfect for this dresser. So I added them to the existing holes in the drawer. Now this is before I have the baskets. I did figure out a way to make it look like they were there. You'll see that in a second. This is what the baskets look like. I got four of them, two for each of the shelves. And just a reminder, this is what the dresser looked like when we first started. Oh gosh, not great. And here is the final look with my editing skills, superimposing those baskets. You guys, I love it. I hope you do too. This beautiful wood round with the name on it and the magnolia leaves is a picture that our granddaughter found on Pinterest. And she said, I want this. And I knew I could make it for less because I looked around and I found them for this size, which is a large one, anywhere from 76 to 90 plus dollars online. So we can do this for less. I picked up this wood round. It's one inch by two feet by two feet. I got it at Home Depot and it was about $17 and change. It's so solid, oh my gosh. And so I'm gonna use that for the first piece. I'm gonna use my Apple Barrel Burnt Umber paint. You can get that at Walmart. And I'm gonna water it down in a little cup here and I'm gonna use it as stain. Now, here's a couple reasons why. One, it doesn't smell. Two, it dries very quickly. And three, look, would you know this wasn't stained? Look at how the beautiful grain of the wood shows through. So I just put it on. I'm using a foam brush that I got a big package off Amazon and it's a great deal by the way. I ordered this finishing wax by Jolie off of Amazon and I'm just going to use my really nice brush that's good for wax. My daughter got it for me on Amazon and I'm not sure what it's called but I think I have similar ones in my store. Anyway, I'm going to apply that to the wood on all sides and the edges and then I'm going to get out my square and I'm going to start measuring. I need to figure out how big my letters need to be and where the center is. I didn't want to draw crossbar lines on it so I taped some pieces of twine and found my center while using my square so I could put a little teeny pencil dot. I used my Cricut to design the word Vivian and Renee using the fonts that I chose. You can use whatever font you like. And if you had sticker letters, you could do that too, but I was going for a very specific look and I knew they had it in my um, Cricut design space. So then I'm just transferring it directly on to the wood round. I centered the word Vivian. Then I'm gonna take the word Renee and it's gonna go just below and off to the right a little bit because that's how the original one looked. Now they use like wood cutouts for their words. And although I have a machine to do that, I haven't figured figured out how to do that yet. So I thought that the vinyl was gonna be just fine and I'm using the permanent vinyl for this. Now, 
One problem, because I put the wax on, the letters didn't want to stick. So that's just a lesson that I learned is don't put the wax on where the letters are going to go. So you guys can avoid that. Normally I would add a hanger to the back, but this was pretty heavy. So we went over to Lowe's and I found this really cool picture hanger for heavy pictures. It would hold like 75 pounds, which is overkill, but I thought better safe than sorry. So I'm going to give that to them. I also found this gorgeous Magnolia garland at five below. You guys have to go to that store sometimes. They have so many things we can use for crafting. And so now I'm going to get out my polycrylic finish and I'm going to put that over the whole thing and I have to do that because of the letters not sticking as good as I want them to. And I like it anyway because it does give it a nice finish. And I did not do it on the back because it's going to be against the wall but I did put little felt rounds on there so that it wouldn't scratch up the wall while they were hanging it or taking it down. You guys, I love this. I'm so thrilled with how it came out. It's huge and they absolutely love it too. And all together I spent somewhere around $30 which is a lot less than $76 to $90. It's amazing what you can do if you make it yourself. wanted a sunburst mirror and my friend Allie who has a channel called Actually Allie made one and I remembered it so I contacted her and I said hey I think I need to make this mirror so she gave me some great tips of course I watched her video which I'm showing you a little bit of on the screen there I'll also have a link down to her channel and video because she's really talented and she helped me so much with this mirror so I'm super excited that's her finished mirror right there that you're looking at in the screen and it's gorgeous. It's very similar to the one I made but I did change it just a little bit. So you start off with just about 100 plus popsicle sticks and so I have got, I did 26 in the full size and I just cut off the rounded edges on both sides. Then I did 26 and I cut them into four and a half inch pieces. And then I also did 26, did those at three inches. And then the last 26 I did were three and a quarter inches. Now these are the measurements that Alec gave me. My mirror was a little bigger than hers. My mirror was a 16 inch mirror, but I made it work. Now at the Dollar Tree, you can get popsicle sticks. They're 36 in a pack and they're, you know, kind of the big ones, not the ginormous ones, but the big ones. And so it wasn't that bad. I only had to get three packages to make it work. And I used, I think it was 104 altogether. I also sanded every one of these pieces after I cut them. And the way I cut them was with my miter shears. If you have good scissors, you can do that. My scissors aren't that great for cutting popsicle sticks. I decided to use my miter shears super, super easy. They're in my Amazon store. Anyway, and after I sanded everything, they looked really sweet and I did all the edges as well. Now they also sell these little squares at the Dollar Tree and they come four in a pack and I used 14 of those and I left the middle open because you really don't need anything in the middle. Once I knew that the big circle would fit on it, I taped all the pieces together so they wouldn't move. What I'm really going to need is about a one inch border around the mirror and that's what I'm going to end up with when this is done. The first thing I'm going to need to do is figure out the exact center of the circle. So I'm going to use my square and a level and I'm going to come up with the center. Put a little tack in the middle of the round piece that came with the mirror and I tied some twine to it and I tried to attach a pencil that was kind of rough so I went around you know trying to make a perfect circle I wanted it to be about an inch bigger than the circle because I wanted the wood to show that was the whole point of that other wood so it would be the mirror in the middle that little wood circle about an inch and then all the starburst pieces and now I'm just tying the twine to the thumbtack and then I'm going to attempt to tie it to the pencil and then trace all the way around trying to keep it at an inch, which didn't work so I had to do something else and you'll see that in just a minute. Next I'm going to hot glue all the seams of this wood so that it doesn't come apart before I cut the circle out. So my solution to getting that inch circle going around was to take a little popsicle stick, cut it into an inch, and then go around like I'm doing right now and just draw a line over the top and connect all the lines. And believe it or not, that worked really well. Just took a couple extra minutes and I wish I'd just done that to begin with because it was super easy and definitely made a nice circle. When it came time to cut out the circle, I used my tin snips that I got from Amazon and a box cutter for some of the tighter pieces. And then I just took a nail file 
file and I went around the edges. You can use sandpaper too, of course. And then I was gonna try to come up with a stain. So what I did was I used a combination of burnt umber paint from Apple Barrel and warm buff. I watered it down a bit to create more of a stain. And I just mixed them together and then I just kept testing it on some scrap wood that I had of the same color. And then I really liked that. So I ended up putting it on because I didn't want it to be different from the popsicle sticks, which were actually a little darker than this wood. And this brought them pretty much to the same shade. So you just gotta play around with that a little and make it match. Or you could stain everything a different color completely. But we really wanted to keep the starburst part in the more natural looking wood. Now I'm placing the mirror on the top and I'm drawing a circle where it's going to sit. And I'm using E6000 and hot glue and placing it right over the top. That way it'll hold immediately and then it will hold forever with the E6000. And then the back, I'm just kind of reinforcing it with some hot glue in that little opening there. And that really keeps the thing together. The next thing I'm gonna do is take some sisal rope that I got from burlapfabric.com. You could use any rope or you could use this kind of rope. Even the twine at Dollar Tree or at Walmart would work. And I'm just gonna hot glue it right around the edge of the mirror because I don't want you to see the edges. I wanna camouflage that with some rope. And I'm gonna go around two times and just make sure that you can't see that at all. Now we're gonna go back to those popsicle sticks. And I'm gonna take the two larger ones and I'm gonna alternate between the two. So I will literally just be going every other one and they'll be next to each other, but they'll kind of start to angle around as you can see here, because I need there to be a little bit of a gap between them. Because then I'm gonna take the two smaller sizes and I'll start on the openings and I will alternate those. Now what I'm doing is I'm using wood glue and hot glue to attach them so that there's a very good bond there. Now, before I finish off the back, I'm gonna take a little piece of twine, knot the ends, and I'm gonna hot glue it and put tape over it for the hanger. Then I'm gonna cut a round piece of craft paper. I'm gonna hot glue that right on. Now, I thought about something after I was done, and that was, this is gonna be hard to pick up. So I do add another little piece of rope. I'm gonna cut a slit. I'm gonna add another little piece of rope with a knot on each end. I'm gonna hot glue it down put the tape over it again with the hot glue. And then I'm gonna fold back the pieces of the craft paper to cover it back up and glue those down. And then I'm gonna cut a little piece of the craft paper to put both up at the top hanger and at that bottom piece. Now, if you wanna pick it up, you can hold the hanger and the little knotted rope because otherwise you don't wanna hold it by the popsicle sticks, even though they're on good, they're just not very thick. And that would be a definite concern. And in the meantime, I started covering up the mirror because you could just see me as a reflection or the lights and that's no fun. Now I'm adding those other two smaller pieces and I'm alternating. Now once I get all of those on there, I'm gonna go around again with some more of that sisal rope and I'm just hot gluing it right to the edges of where the popsicle sticks are so you never see that. I'm gonna go around three times and I love it because that brought this from boho to modern farmhouse in my opinion and I really, really love the combination of the wood and the sisal rope. I think it's so pretty. I love how this turned out. It's a very large piece and it's gonna look beautiful. Mirrors like this sell for $100 and up and doing this myself, I paid just about $30. I really hope you like it. And here's just a little bit more of a close-up shot. this cute little house shape from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use my heat tool to get off the tags on the back and all of those flowers on the front. And I got that at Amazon. And then I sand it down, so I want to get rid of that rough spot. I'm going to use my little ladybug vacuum to get all the dust from the sanding up. I really love that thing. It comes in handy. Next, I'm gonna take my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and I'm gonna do several coats on this entire house. I'm gonna use my heat tool to dry it quickly because I'm impatient. <laughs> then I'm gonna very lightly sand again with my Dollar Tree sanding sponge just to get a really nice smooth finish because I'm gonna put some rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree on this. I'm just looking at those transfers now. It's got all the cute words and all different fonts and directions and I'm just trying to figure out how much of it to cut. It's not like I can fit it exactly. So what I'll do is I'll fussy cut it, I will attach it, and then I'll cut out individual words and just put them on where I can fit them. 
so you can see there I just used my little Cricut scraper you could use a popsicle stick anything you want and as you rub on it the transfer releases onto whatever surface and then you just slowly lift the plastic and if you see that something isn't coming off just rub again until it does they're actually very easy to do be careful not to touch the back of it with your finger. I did by accident and a little bit came off. So then you'll see I will go in with a little black marker and just kind of touch it up. For those who don't know, I am on social media. You can find me on Pinterest, Facebook, TikTok now, and Instagram. Come on over, follow me, say hi, and if you have any pictures to send me, please do it there. All the links are in my description box below. So there I am with the marker. Now what I didn't do was let it dry enough or seal the top with a spray. I went and got my Mod Podge and started brushing over it and the ink started to smear. Oh no, right? So I tried to dry it and then go over it again. And what I ended up having to do is go back with my white paint and do a little bit of touch up, which is, you know, unfortunate because it took extra time. So if you're really careful, you will not have to do that. Now that that's done, I took a piece of scrap of paper, which I just love, and I traced around the shape of the house so I could cut it out and I'm just going to attach it to the back. I love that look with scrap of paper because you can get so many cool patterns and pictures that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And I actually just used a glue stick to attach it and I scraped with my little Cricut scraper to make sure it was on. I could have used my brayer, but this was handy. Now I took a nail file, also from the Dollar Tree. You could take some sandpaper or a sanding sponge and just go around the edges and I only go downward because I don't don't want to rip the paper up and it will separate from the edges and make a really nice clean edge. I'm going to do that all the way around. Then I'm going to take some twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to find the middle and wrap it around and then I'm going to wrap it around again and again and when it's all done I'm going to make a little bow right there on the scrapbook paper side and it's super cute. I'm going to put a little bit of greenery just that I have left over from cutting up other picks and I'm going to hot glue that right to the center. And then I'm going to turn it over and add a little bit to the other side. And then I add this cute little white paper flower that I had right in the middle on the side with the words, just to make it look different from the other side. It's just a nice little finishing touch. I decided that the other side needed something right in the middle between the two pieces of greenery. So I found this other little light green kind of flowery pick that I had and I'm just going to attach it right there. You guys, this is a very easy project, super inexpensive, almost all Dollar Tree. I hope you like it. This DIY, I'm using this little truck cutout uh, that I got at the Dollar Tree, and then some scrapbook paper, cute little cow skin print. And then this is a piece from the back of a calendar. It's one of the months of one of the Dollar Tree calendars. And then this one is the farmer's market from 2021 calendar. I'm gonna use a piece of that. I'm gonna take off the label, which actually came off super easy this time, yay. And then I'm gonna figure out how much of the scrap of paper that I need to cover the box part of the truck. This isn't like your typical truck. It's sort of like one of those little mini box trucks. I'm just going to cut that piece out and then I am going to use a glue stick from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach that right over the box part of the truck. I want it to look like a little dairy truck. Once I have that attached, I'm going to take my nail file and I'm just going to file around the edges only going downward so that I can take off that excess bit of scrap of paper that's on there and it gives me a nice clean edge. I love that. I've got a bunch of little pieces of wood and I didn't have one that would fit the exact size of the little baby sign that I have there. So I'm going to just 
hot glue two of them together to make a nice little platform to put that on. And so I'm just gonna use my hot glue, put them together, and then I'm going to take my scissor blade. I'm gonna go around the edges of my little sign there and just rough it up. I love doing that. I learned that from a friend, Linda, at Faith Chick 777s DIY and Design. I'll put her link down in the description box. She's wonderful. I'm gonna add some buffalo check ribbon to each side because this is a little bigger than my sign. And I thought that would be a super, super cute accent. And I'll file down the edges a little bit to make sure they're nice and clean. And then I'm gonna put some hot glue around the edges of this little sign and attach it directly on to the pieces of wood. And it's so cute. It's gonna just look great on my little truck. Now I'm going to take the cover of that calendar and I'm just going to fussy cut around that little part that says always fresh because that's all I actually want from it and so I'll get that all cut out. Then I'm going to take some cardboard and I'm going to trace the shape of that little sign on there and then I'm going to use the one I cut out and make two more because I want it to be a little thicker. This wasn't very thick cardboard and I'm going to hot glue all of the pieces together to make this a little more sturdy. I didn't want it to lay perfectly flat since the other sign is on that piece of wood. And I didn't have any wood that without having to cut it that would fit this perfectly and this was so much easier and faster and it's a good little hack. Just use cardboard if you want to raise something up a little bit. For those of you who love to watch crafting videos while you craft, I have a mega playlist with a link down in my description box because I do that when I'm crafting. So there it is if you're interested. To attach the little sign, I'm going to use some Mod Podge because I don't want any lumps under it from the hot glue. And that's super easy, of course, you just put it underneath. I'm not going to put any over the top because I don't think I really need to. Then I'm going to take my nail file and go around the edges and just kind of smooth it out. It's not wood, but I thought what the heck, I'd try it. And then I've got this little chalk marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to kind of go around all of the edges, give it a little bit of a distressed look, but using the white instead of like a darker color because I kind of like that. It looks really cool. Now, I should have done this before I did anything with that scrap of paper, but I don't know why I didn't. But anyway, I'm going to paint the rest of the truck with my Bristol-Am linen white chalk paint very carefully around the part with the scrap of paper. I'm going to take a black jot marker from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to go around the outside of the tires, and then I'm going to draw the circle apart for the tires and fill them in with that same marker. Now I'm looking at a picture of a truck online and I'm just gonna draw some lines that give this a little more dimension. You know, things that like a bumper and a door and a door handle and so forth and so on. And then I decided to outline the whole thing because I thought that looked really cool. And so obviously that's optional or you don't even have to draw in the truck part. I just thought it would look really neat to draw in the parts of the truck and just, you know, give it that little extra oomph. I'm going to attach my little always fresh sign uh, using some hot glue right to the top of the box part of the truck. And after that's attached, I'm going to attach my little homemade sign just below it and I think it's going to look so cute. I looked at another picture and saw that I could actually add a little more to my truck body. So that's what I'm going to do with my job marker. I'm just going to make it look even better. I needed to put something in the middle of my tires, so I found these two little round pieces of scrap wood that I had. I'm going to paint them white, and I'm just going to hot glue them right to the center of each of the tires. And that is just a great little touch. And then I'm going to take my chalk marker from Dollar Tree and just go around that homemade sign. I thought that looked really cute. I've got some tumbling tower blocks that I'm going to paint black with my jot black marker. And I'm going to use them on the back to create a stand. I end up using three on each side. I did the last one off camera because it was so weighted on the front. I needed a little more weight in the back to make it stand up, but now it stands up perfectly. Guys, I love this. I hope you like it too. So easy, so cute, and very farmhouse fun.
one of the whiteboard easels from the Dollar Tree and I decided to turn it into a cute little farmhouse standing sign. I'm going to paint the entire back and around the frame with my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and when that dries I'm going to take some scrapbook paper and I'm going to cut out the exact shape of the rectangular portion of this sign and once I have that I'm going to take the blades of my scissors and I'm going to rough up all the edges completely around this entire piece of scrapbook paper to give it a more rustic kind of weathered look which I really like. I'm going to use my glue stick and attach that right onto the whiteboard. I've got two more pieces of scrapbook paper, different patterns, and I'm gonna cut out the shapes, but I'm gonna make each one about a quarter of an inch smaller than the one that's gonna be underneath it. That way you can see each piece of paper, like layered. And once I get them cut out, I'm also gonna rough up the edges on those two pieces with my scissor blade. And then I'm gonna take my glue stick and attach them directly to the middle of the front of the easel so that you see the three layers. And I just think that's so cute. I have this little barn. It was on a piece I got from a thrift store and I cleaned it up and then I'm removing that back hanger. I've got this really cool staple remover that I got on Amazon that takes stuff off really easily. And I'm gonna use my apple barrel. It's called a uh, flag red paint. And I'm gonna paint over all the red cause it was just more rust looking and I wanted it to look more red. And I'm gonna take my drop marker in black and I'm gonna go over the parts that were black, like the roof line, the edges of the roof, and then the box in the middle. And I'm going to draw the barn doors as well. take my chalk marker from Dollar Tree and I'm going to go around the big window in the barn and I'm going to make an X and then I'm going to use that same white to kind of do some distressing and accents. I'm going to do lines straight down, you know, like as if it was planked wood that looked worn on the edges. And then I'll take the drop marker and go back over the black parts that I kind of covered a little bit with that and just clean that up a little bit. And I'm just loving the way this is turning out. It's just adorable and it's going to be a cute little thing to put either on a tear tray or sing on a shelf or just, you know, just in the kitchen even. I think it would look really cute. Just gonna take my hot glue gun and I'm gonna put a bunch of hot glue on the back so it's nice and secure and I'm just gonna attach it right to the center of my easel. Then I'm going to take some jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna put some little dots of hot glue around as I wrap it around starting at the bottom all the way up to the top right around the edges and then I'm just gonna tie a cute little bow and that is gonna be it for this one. Absolutely love it. It turned out so, so cute. I'm going to use three of those little boxes that usually have the drawers in them from the Dollar Tree and two of these little teeny cutting boards I got at Hobby Lobby on 40% off clearance. They're adorable. And then I always save little pieces of things that I don't use. So I've got a chicken, a tractor, and then this little like half circle shape. And these were literally such a good price. They were um, $3.99 each, but 40% off. And I'm gonna use the plaster color chalk paint from Waverly and the truffle color chalk paint from Waverly. Now, one of these boxes was already painted white previously, but I'm gonna sand the other two down and I'm still gonna go over them with the plaster color because it's just off white. And I know that other white will look different if I don't cover it. I'm gonna paint all three boxes, inside, outside, bottom, everything. And then I'm gonna sand down my little pieces. I'm gonna paint the half circle plaster on both sides and then just the back of the chicken and the tractor with the plaster color as well.
Next, I'm just going to kind of play around with them and determine where I would like to place them. So I've decided I'm going to use a combination of hot glue and liquid adhesive to put the chicken and the tractor on the two outside boxes. And I'm going to wait to add the little half circle. Now I'm going to take the truffle and a foam brush and just very lightly touch all of the edges, the entire box, every possible edge there is. And I'm just loving that little farmhouse antiquing look that it gives. It kind of goes into the wood a little bit so it's, it's like not a clean line. And then I just added a little bit to the edges of those pieces and around the middle, very lightly dry brush. So now I can go ahead and figure out the placement of the half circle. Now I'm gonna take that liquid adhesive and the hot glue and attach all three boxes to each other. So that way I've got one piece now going forward. Then I'm gonna cut up some cardboard to lift up that middle piece because I can't get it on there without it interfering with the chicken and the tractor. And by doing this, it kind of puts it slightly above it and then I can get some glue on the back and attach it. And that really makes a huge difference. So if you're ever working with pieces that don't lay the same, this is a great way just kind of paint the edges of the cardboard like I did with the truffle and it will just be hidden and you really won't even notice it. Next, I'm gonna take last year's farmhouse calendar and I'm gonna to go to the back of it and cut out this cute little picture that just says farm fresh. I'm gonna trim it down to size so that it fits right on that little half circle. And I'm gonna use that liquid adhesive on the back and I'm just gonna put it on there and then get my brayer out and make sure every piece of it is touching the surface. And it's super, super cute. I'm gonna distress around the edges of that and I got a little too much on there so I just quickly grabbed a baby wipe and I was able to clean it up right away. Now I'm gonna take my little cutting boards and get rid of the tags and I'm gonna do a tight bond which is like a heavy duty wood glue and I'm gonna put that on both sides and then a little bit of hot glue just to get it to stick for right now so that I can keep working. And it's a little wider than the three boxes but because I have some pieces hanging over on the front I had to let the extra go to the back. You really won't notice it. Now, I'm gonna take a big piece of twine, it's a little thicker, make a knot, put a little drop of hot glue. I'm gonna wrap some tape around the edge of my twine. I'm gonna put some of the bigger beads on there. They're just natural, I'm not gonna paint them. I got them on Amazon, really good deal. I'm gonna put just enough to make it to the other side and then I'm going to string the twine right through, make another knot and then add a dab of hot glue to make sure it stays in place. And now I have a cute little farmhouse handle for this caddy. You could use this for so many different reasons, and that's it. That's all there is to it. to get these bamboo cutting boards because I've been wanting to make this for a while. I'm using some of the larger paint stir sticks as well that I got, I think I got them at Lowe's. And I'm gonna get my brush wet with some water. I'm just gonna spray it down a little bit because I wanna water down the antique wax from Waverly because I'm not looking for a hard stain since this already has a stain on it. I just wanna try to make it look a little darker because I'm gonna be staining the paint stir sticks. And I'm gonna use my tight bond glue and I'm going to attach two of the stir sticks together. I'm also going to add a couple dabs of hot glue so it'll hold now while I'm trying to finish the project. Then I'm going to take those stir sticks and then place them on the back so that just the handle is sticking up and I'm just going to hot glue those because it, it's going to be secure enough with that. And I found these Waverly adhesive stencils at Walmart. I love them. Oh my gosh, it's the only time I've ever not lead in a stencil and I'm going to use the pineapple and it just sticks right down which is wonderful and you can reuse them too they're easy to clean. I'm going to use my maize color which is like a yellow Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to dab on with a sponge brush all through the pineapple and when it comes to the stem of the pineapple I'm going to use actually an Arteza marker and just kind of dab it in there as well and then the satisfying part peeling off the stencil and look how good it turned out you guys that's the best I've ever done and then I used a baby wipe and cleaned off the stencil so now it's ready to use again and I'm going to create these little edging pieces that I'm going to place on the four corners and I'm going to use that maize color and dab it on and I'm just loving the look it's just such a nice finished look and I can't wait to hang this in my kitchen. I've always wanted these little cutting boards with the handles and they're very expensive. So for this one, I mean, this is nothing. 
I decided to try to get the handle to match better with the cutting board and so I added a little bit of the yellow almost like wiped it on like a stain and that did kind of help a little bit. I think if I started with the yellow I would have been better off and now I'm just putting some Mod Podge over the top to seal it and then I have this rope from burlapfabric.com which I will link down below. I love the light color of it and I am just going to hot glue and wrap it around about three four times and then I'm going to cut it off at the back and that'll be you know enough of that and then I'm going to make a little hanger in the back that you can't see on the handle that way I can hang it in my kitchen and I just think it's gonna be so cute and my favorite way is to put the rope on with hot glue and then add a little bit of masking tape with some glue underneath it and just trim the sides and that seems to hold those on really well let me know what you guys think of this one cool piece at the Goodwill and I thought this would be so much fun to bring it into more the modern times. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is clean it off of course with my crud cutter and then I'm going to sand it down a bit just to make sure that I can paint over it. And of course use my little ladybug vacuum from Amazon to clean up all that sawdust. Then I'm going to grab my Kills primer paint in white and I'm going to paint this. Now I have a friend, her name is Leonette at DIY Beauty on Purpose and she does this really cool technique that I really wanted to try and that's where you paint on your paint in one direction and then you go back in the exact opposite direction and it leaves this really neat texture. So that is what I'm going to do. Here is a little bit of a close-up of me doing that and I really like the way it looks when it's all dry. It just has such a neat texture to it and I can see why she does it and now I think I'm going to be doing that more often. So thanks Leonette. Up. I'll put her link down in my description box if you'd like to check her out. I'm going to take my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go around all of the actual edges just to give it a little bit of a distressed look. Then I'm going to take my ink paint by Waverly, that's chalk paint, and I'm going to do around the edges on the two sides and across the top. I'm just going to make those black and that's going to be my black and white look on this one. And I love the contrast. It's just very modern farmhouse, super cute, and you guys, so easy. This is such an easy DIY. I don't know why, but it's pretty satisfying watching like painting the edges like that. I sped it up, but I still really like watching it. I hope you guys do too. And now I'm painting the top little edges that I was talking about before where the hole is just on the very top. I'm not gonna do it on the bottom. I've got these cute little cutouts from the Dollar Tree. There's a pumpkin and a leaf, and I decided to take the leaf one. Looks like it has burlap around the edges, but it doesn't. And I'm just gonna hot glue it right to the front of the mason jar that fits right into that hole. And then I'm gonna put the mason jar back up in the hole, and I'm gonna attach it with the rim of the mason jar, and that keeps it right in place. Then I've got these cute little picks from the Dollar Tree that have pine cones and cotton and I guess that's kind of a little cattail. And I'm going to keep this simple and I'm just going to put it in there. I feel really good about how it turned out and I hope you like it. adorable let's get cozy sign over online at antique farmhouse for $26 and I think I can make this for less. I found this little framed uh, metal art at Hobby Lobby on 70% clearance. It was like $374 so 70% off that very cheap. Now there's a lot of stuff to remove here that I have to use my heat gun for so I am just going to work away in fast motion and get all of that stuff off. Took a little heat and a little muscle but I did get them all off and now we are ready to go ahead and start making that adorable little sign. Now the wood that they used for their sign was a lighter wood. This 
is staying much darker, so I'm going to sand some of it off. I'm also going to need some beads and some twine to create the little hanging thing that drapes across the sign. Now where that um, metal thing was, I had to fill it in with a little bit of wood filler and sand that down because I needed a smooth surface. I'm going to use the plaster colored paint by Waverly. Now, okay, I should have taken the base picture out of the frame. I didn't think of it until I got a little further along, so if you're thinking it now, yeah, I know, I should have done it. Anyway, I didn't at this point, so I was trying to be so careful not to get the paint on the frame. I did have to wipe some of it off, but that's okay because you know what? It, things happen. So now I'm just adding a little bit of the plaster and then wiping off some of it from the frame so that I can lighten it even a little more. I'll never get it to their color of wood because it was already stained. I would have had to sand that thing way down. I'm gonna use some painter's tape to create the little stripes that were on there and I'm going to use ink color chalk paint by Waverly and I'm going to water it down. I have a little spray bottle there and literally I'm just going to put a whole bunch on and then kind of dab it off and then you'll see when I remove the tape there's just a nice little line but it's not like super dark and solid. So I'm going to follow the pattern on the original one and do it exactly like they did. There's some darker thicker stripes and some very faint narrow stripes and that's what I'm doing right now with the tape. And I just use the same pieces of tape over and over because they're always dry by the time I get them back on there. And I'm basically treating this like a stencil, so I'm not painting it on, I'm dabbing it on. Just wanted to mention that. I probably should have used a little dabber, but I just took a regular paintbrush and kind of tapped it on there. That way it wouldn't be that super solid line. In order to do the letters, I have tons of Dollar Tree alphabet stickers, and I decided to use those for two of the words, and then I'm gonna handwrite the other one. And I could have used my Cricut, but I just had these handy, and I decided to go ahead and use them. So the font for the word cozy is different than the one in the picture, but I like it. It's kind of more cutesy, and it fits the word. And then the font for get, that's fine. It looks great. And then the word let's, they had it in like a cursive, so I decided to hand draw it with a pencil while looking at theirs. And then I go in with some paint, and then eventually with a marker to darken that and make it look better. I'm not great at the lettering, I'm learning, but you know what, I do think it turned out cute, so I was very happy with how that part turned out. Next, I'm gonna take the twine and the beads, and you don't paint the beads in this one, they just stay natural. So there's like a pattern, it's two beads, and then a tassel, two beads, and then a tassel, and then two beads. Now, I'm going very fast here, so what I'm gonna do is, in my description box, I will have a link for a very good tassel tutorial that I made months ago. I'm just gonna do it quickly here and get this thing assembled. Once I have everything strung on the twine, I'm going to attach part of it to the back because it drapes over from the right side to the left side. And I'm just going to hot glue it down and make sure I don't cover up any of the words. And I even trim my tassels a bit just to make sure that I don't cover the words. And then I kind of tack everything down a little bit with a drop of hot glue to make sure it's laying exactly where I want it to. Sometimes I get excited when I'm making things and then I forget a step, which is putting Mod Podge over the whole top of the sign. So I had to move the tassels around a little bit, but I got it covered. And now I'm gonna hot glue the sign piece back into the frame, which fits perfectly because I had just pried it out carefully. And this sign has turned out so cute. And I literally made it for less than $4. The original was 26. Let me know what you think. paint stir sticks that I ordered on Amazon and they don't have the curvy part so I really like them. And then I used two of the Hot Wheel tracks from the Dollar Tree, Waverly Paint Ink and Steel, and then the Folk Art Paint Metallic Silver. And what I'm going to do is start off with my Kills White Primer and I'm going to do almost three coats on both sides of these tracks. Now I cut one of them in half, then I added the steel color over the top after I had done several coats. 
and that is just to cover that white but you only need to do one coat of that because then I'm going to take the ink color and with a stiff brush I'm just going to dab it all over and I'm going to do that faux galvanized metal technique. Next comes white. I'm just going to dab that all over, both sides by the way, and then the metallic silver and I'm going to dab that just to dull down the white and the black a little bit and that's what kind of gives it that galvanized look. Now I'm going to take these two pieces of the track and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to attach them to each other. There's holes at both ends except for the one I cut so I'm going to use my crop dial which is also from Amazon and I'm going to make a hole on that other end so I have something to attach it with. Then I'm going to line them up and see how that's going to look and I'm going to mark it and I'm going to take a blade and cut off the raised piece because I want it to lay flat on top of the other one when I overlap them and by getting rid of that little raised piece of the track I can accomplish that. And then I can use E6000 and hot glue combination and get those pieces to stick together. Then I'm going to take a clamp and hold them together because otherwise it just pops off until it dries. And then I'm temporarily going to put a clamp on the other side until I'm ready to glue it. And I'm going to draw a circle on my paper that's just on my desk because I need to create that wood base. So I'm going to use those paint stir sticks and I'm going to start cutting them with my miter shears from Amazon. And I'm using that circle that I drew on the paper as a way to determine how many pieces and how big I need them to be. And as I measure, I'm just drawing the lines where the circle will be. Now I'm going to glue them all together with a combination of hot glue and this liquid adhesive from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to wipe off the excess and this is going to create my entire piece. Now I'm going to double check again the measurement. I'm going to put that ring over the top. I'm going to reinforce with some more glue. And then I'm going to use my blade and I'm going to start cutting off the excess around that circle. You just score it till it all comes off piece by piece. Next I'm going to sand my wood. I want to get rid of the pencil marks and anything else. Then I'm going to take the Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm going to paint that on there and then wipe off the excess basically to stain the wood. And I'm going to do that on both sides and around the edges. And now I'm going to take that ring that I created and I'm going to do a combination of hot glue and E6000 to attach it all the way around. Next I'm going to take my steel paint and where the wood shows on the bottom I'm just going to paint that with the steel so it all looks cohesive. I'm going to take some wired jute cord from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut two pieces that will be the handles and then I'm going to cut out of this tin baking pan from the Dollar Tree a couple of pieces that I'm going to wrap around each edge of those handles and then I'm going to paint it all with the steel paint so it looks like it is metal that is welded on there and the rope will actually look like a handle. And now I'm going to take my little tin pieces, wrap them around the edge of each side of that painted jute. And then once I'm done doing that and assembling them, I will hot glue them to each side of my tray. And I just use a little hot glue as I wrap it around the jute and I attach it two times to make sure when I first start and at the end, that way it's on there good and it's not going to go anywhere. Next, I'm going to take these two little pop-up dots from the Dollar Tree stickers and paint two of them steel and then cover the holes that were there on the tracks. And it's going to end up looking like, you know, a rivet or a bolt that's there and it just looks like it's supposed to be there. And now I'm going to attach those little handles. Now they're not really functional, although you could pick it up because this is very light. But this is more of a decor piece than a functional piece. This is going to be just fine with hot glue. Of course, you could use E6000 if you really felt better about it. And after the handles attached, this is complete. This was really fun to make and I think it came out actually pretty cool and I love that I used the Hot Wheel tracks.
use the bamboo cutting board and I'm also going to use four of the paint stir sticks which I'm going to cut down with my miter shears. They're in my Amazon store, great tool. Would have to use a saw otherwise to cut these down. And I'm just marking them so that they'll all be the right size. And I end up with four of them and I'm going to glue two together and then the other two together. And then I'm going to glue them to each other on the sides and then I'll get a thicker handle because I'm going to take this bamboo cutting board and I'm going to place it horizontal so it's the long ways across. And now I'm just going to outline where the stir sticks are going to go for the handle, use my tight bond glue and then after I spread it on I'm going to put some hot glue all the way around the edges so I get that fast hold while the tight bond is doing its stuff and drying overnight and that way I can keep working. decided to try painting that maize color on the bare stir sticks first to see if that would get me closer and then do the antique wax over the top of that. Just wipe it on with a little baby wipe. And you know, I actually think that worked better and I will do that in the future if I use one of these bamboo cutting boards and it matches better the stain. So I'm really happy with how that turned out and I'm doing the back the same way. Put the yellow first and then this wax over the top of it. And now I'm going to do the cutting board just very lightly because I do want to make sure it gets a little bit of that brownish color in there. And now I'm going to get out my stencils again from Waverly, the adhesive ones, and I'm going to take these little pond leaves and I'm going to use my Kills White Primer and I'm going to dab that on. And I'm going to put one in the bottom left corner and one in the upper right corner kind of facing the opposite direction. And then I have another stencil, which is also by Waverly, but they're made out of cardboard, so you really have to be careful. So if you notice, as I'm dabbing, I'm holding down the opposite side with a pencil to make sure that it doesn't bleed. And actually, it worked out pretty well. It's just a little more effort. Take it off, and there's a little break in it, so I just took a little art brush and I filled that in. And I'm gonna cover it again with Mod Podge, and I'm gonna wrap the rope around just like I did in the other one, and this one's done, and you guys, I love it. market wood platform set. There were two here for 148. I decided to make one and I made it square instead of rectangle. Now this I'm just using paint sticks and some paint so it's really not going to cost very much. The paint sticks are the ones I got from Amazon and that's apple barrel burnt umber paint with some water mixed in to create a stain and I'm going to stain every single piece of the wood all sides edges top bottom. Once that's done, I just looked at the picture and figured out how many I might need for the top. I think I did 12 and then I had for each of the four sides. And then I also decided that in order to do this, I was gonna have to use some of my tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna use my square so I can get a good right angle and I'm gonna use a combination of hot glue and liquid adhesive from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach all my pieces. Now I'm gonna use this only for lightweight things so I wasn't too worried about the weight of it. If I needed this to hold something heavy, I would have absolutely used wood glue and probably E6000 together. And now I'm just assembling it and I'm taking the cross slats over the top and I'm gonna attach each one. And I'm gonna complete that top. Then I'm gonna assemble the sides and the legs. And the legs are what I'm gonna use the tumbling tower blocks for. I'm gonna stain those as well with the mix that I had made. And then I'm going to take two of the tumbling tower blocks and use a combination of the liquid adhesive and the hot glue together. And then I'm going to stack that too high. So it's going to be four tumbling tower blocks for each leg. And then I will attach the side slats that go down a little bit lower. So there's the ones that are up close to the top and then the one I'm putting right now on the side. And of course there's four of those as well. Now this was pretty easy to assemble once I figured out kind of the pattern of it. I think it's really cute, but I did want it to be a little more stable. So I don't know if the other one had this, but I added pieces underneath like crossbars just to make sure that this could hold anything at all, even just little decor pieces. 
I decided to add one more coat of stain and then I took it outside and did a clear coat over the entire thing. And I love it. What do you guys think? Why is actually a thrift flip. I picked up this little sign from the Goodwill. It was super cute, said something cute, but it just wasn't really my style. So I took off the tag and then I sanded off the words and I didn't want to just cover it with paint because it's, I'm gonna use a white paint and they're darker. So I just sanded them off, used my ladybug vacuum to clean up like I always do. You know, all my tools are always down in my Amazon store. And then I'm using my Kills Primer in white. I love that. I use that in place of chalk paint a lot to cover larger surfaces. And it actually is gonna take a couple coats to cover this, but no problem, it's such a small little piece. You know, of course I realized I probably should take off the hanger. <laughs> so I stopped before I got to the top and I took off the little hanger, just had to untwist it. And and it's just got two little holes where they put that in. And then I'm gonna paint everything, including that cute little embellishment at the top, which I think is so cute. People make those like out of clay and then add them to signs. And it was kind of cool to see it was already there. So that's the first coat done. And then I'm gonna use my heat gun to dry between coats. And even when you don't see me do it, I always use the heat gun in between. I'm gonna do the back and then I'm gonna turn it back over and do the second coat on the front. And that way it looks very, very white. And that's what I was going for. And now I was gonna try to use some painter's tape to kind of block off the edges. And use my marker to paint around them. But look what happens while I dry it. But look what happens after I take off the tape. Nice bleed. So I ended up just making my line a little thicker. It was super easy to fix. And I just know that with a marker, you really can't use uh, even painter's tape. It's just because of the wood grain, I guess. It goes right underneath. So I drew my outline all the way around the front and then on the sides of the entire sign. And I just love the way that look gives it kind of that farmhousey type look. But I'm, again, still going for the cottage core. And I think that embellishment at the top really helps add that to it. Gives it a little more of the almost shabby chic, but not quite just finishing up the marker and then of course that's got to dry if you get that on your hands oh my gosh anything you touch is gonna have that on it forever because <laughs> I'm using a permanent marker of course right and then this part wasn't too hard I sped this up but I actually did this very slowly so that I wouldn't get too crazy and if I got too thick I just kind of adjusted you know and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some antique wax paint from Waverly and I'm just gonna distress that embellishment I'm gonna put a bunch on and then I'm gonna take a baby wipe and wipe it off and I'll go back and forth till I get the look that I want. I just didn't want it on the white part. I have these really cool thick letters from Walmart and I'm going to spell out the word eat. So I'm just going to take my marker and I'm going to cover over that kind of bronze color on the E, A, and T and I will also dry that and then I'm going to put that on the sign and center it and it's so cute. I could see this like in an English cottage somewhere. I really could and it was so easy. You, you could do this with any sign. You could add any embellishment, honestly, any letter you want but I just this reminded me almost of like the London tube which is their subway and how signs would look and I just really liked it and once I get my letters placed I'm just gonna add the little hanger back and that's it it was so easy and it turned out so adorable let me know what you think I'm loving this one Really cute pieces were on their way to the Goodwill when I was able to get them for free from a friend. And I'm using the Agave Color of Waverly Chalk Paint to paint just the very top of them. And I'm going to use my little heat tool to dry them so I don't have to wait so long. Link in the description if you want one. And I'm going to use a chippy brush and my White Kills Primer paint. And I'm going to kind of whitewash that. And then I'm going to make sure that the edges are nice and white because I got a little paint over on the sides by accident. Now I'm taking a nail file and I'm going to go around every hard edge around the outside. So basically there's the one at the top where the agave meets the white. There's the far edge where it would lay down. And then there's like a little middle ridge. And I'm also going to do the knob on there as well just to make sure that it gets that kind of distressed look. 
I'm going to use my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree just to go over the top where the agave and the whitewash were just to smooth it out a little bit. And then I'm going to take this polycrylic varnish by Minwax and I'm going to go ahead and just cover the top, the sides, and the knot. I have these little napkin rings from the Dollar Tree and it comes six in a pack and I'm going to use two for each of these, I will call them sconces, and I'm going to hot glue two together and kind of line up the seams on them so that it becomes a little bit longer. I'm going to do that for both of these and then what I'm going to do is use that almost like a little flower vase and I've got these flowers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to push the leaves up and then use my tin snips to go ahead and just cut off little pieces. I like it better when I can kind of decide the size of them and I'm just going to arrange them. I have two different kinds like a baby's breath and a little white flower and I put them together. I'm going to make two little bouquets, one for each of those little vase things that I made. I have this really cute ribbon with kind of a swirly design on it, white and like almost like a gray. And I got that at Walmart. And I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom of the bouquet. And then I'm gonna um, also hot glue at the end when I'm all done. And I'm gonna just do that too. I didn't wanna use twine on this one because it's a little bit more modern farmhouse and it's got the silver and I just thought this looked better. And then I'm gonna take uh, my tin snips at, when I'm done and I'm gonna snip the very ends of the little stems because they hang out just a little bit and I didn't wanna see those. They are such a handy tool. Next, I'm gonna put some hot glue on the side of the little vase and I'm gonna hot glue it right to the sconce. And then I'm gonna take my flowers and I'm gonna hot glue the very bottom to the inside of the little vase. And just make sure it's sticking nice and add any hot glue where I might need it to secure that. And then I'm gonna put a little under the flowers as well. I really loved how this turned out with the color and everything. I hope you guys like it too. This little um, sign from the Goodwill and although it's super cute I wanted to do something different to it so I removed the twine and the clothespins on the front and off camera I took my sander and I sanded down the front so I could get rid of the words that were on there and now I'm going to take my antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to go ahead and restain it. I did like the dark stain I just didn't want the words that were there so I'm going to go ahead and put that on all over and then I'm going to wipe it off the excess with a paper towel. I'm going to take my Arteza paint marker in white and I'm going to start drawing a dandelion that's already dried out. You'll see what I mean here in a second. And I'm then putting little things on the edges. I'm just kind of embellishing it a little bit because I just want this to be super, super cute. I'm then going to freehand the words wish and dream and I'm going to try to make it look like a typewriter font. This is freehand so doing the best I can. Actually I think it turned out really good. And I'm going to go over everything again with my marker until it's a little bit brighter of a white. These markers sometimes you have to keep pumping them to make sure that they stay nice and fresh. But it's worth it because it comes out so so cute. I'm continuing to make my little dandelion by adding some more lines and little dots on the edges. I'm also going to make a little circle in the center and then I'm going to continue making this look brighter and whiter as I go. I got this really super cute gold and white twine at Target of all places and I'm going to use that to go back through those holes and thread them through. I'm going to put a little tape on the end so I can thread it through easier. I'm going to tie a knot in the back in the first piece and then I'm going to just go back and forth just the way it was originally but using this really cute twine.
Once I have it all threaded, I'm going to tie a knot in the back and put a little hot glue to make sure that it's nice and secure. Then I'm going to take a gold Arteza paint marker and I'm just going to embellish it a little bit like on those little dots on the end and then I'm going to add the three dots after the word dream and wish also in the gold. The clothespins that came with this were like with a glitter bronze and I wanted them to be more gold to match. So I'm using that same Arteza paint marker in gold and I'm just going to go over all the edges of those little clothespins and I'm going to put them right back on there and they're so cute. I think it would be super cute to write out your wishes and dreams and then put them on the clothespins and have them in front of you to remind you what you want to accomplish. Then I use a piece from a mop head. It's like a three strand cord and I'm going to take it down to one and I'm going to hot glue it over the widest parts of the little dandelion to give it that texture. I just love texture and this kind of brings it to life. To cover that very center piece, I'm going to kind of wrap a piece of this mop head around itself in a circle until it's the right size and then I'm going to hot glue it right to the center. You guys, I'm loving this one. You have to tell me what you think. This DIY is this whitewash beaded wooded lantern for $40. I know I can do this for less. I'm gonna use some large paint sticks that I got, I think at Lowe's. I have some wood planks from the Dollar Tree. A sign that I had done a different DIY and a scrap piece of wood, a beaded necklace from Dollar Tree, an old toothbrush holder that I had I was gonna to donate to the Goodwill. And then I'm using some Kills white primer paint that I love to use. I'm sanding the little scrap piece of wood that I'm using and then using my ladybug vacuum to clean it up. I'm painting all of the wood with that white paint and I'm just going to cover every side pretty much of everything. I'm going to take the paint sticks and I'm going to cut off that little top part where it has an indentation. I'm going to use my miter shears for that. I got those on Amazon and I love them. They make cutting so easy without using major tools. So I'll also leave you guys that link in case you're interested. And I'm going to paint those also. I didn't need the part with the holes on top of the toothbrush holder and it was really easy. I just bend it and it came right off. So that's great. And then I tried to sand the little ceramic piece and so the paint would stick better. I don't know if that helped, but I'm using my ink colored chalk paint to paint this part all black, including the little handle that I'm holding. I'm gonna paint all of that black because in the Dirklands inspired piece, the part that held the candle was all black. In order to get the color that was on the original piece, I used a combination of the fawn colored chalk paint and the white wax from Waverly. So what I'm doing is I'm heavily dry brushing the fawn onto all of the white pieces that I painted. And after that's done, I'm gonna go over it with the white Waverly wax. And it's gonna give me the exact color that I'm looking for. And I was just really lucky that I guessed right because I wasn't sure how this was gonna work. So this works out as a really nice technique. It almost creates like a blonde kind of a wood stain. I need to paint that little scrap piece of wood with the black ink colored paint because that piece in the original is black and it had a kind of a scalloped edge for the legs which I don't have so I'm using these little blocks from Dollar Tree and I'm doing the same paint technique to them that I did with the rest of the wood and I'm hot gluing them to the very bottom of the base of this lantern. Now I'm going to hot glue the little black square onto the middle of the top of the base in order to attach the piece that's going to hold my candle, which is that old toothbrush holder, I need to drill a hole. So I'm trying to find the center of that little black square. So I'm drawing diagonal lines across and the center obviously is where I'm going to drill. I'm going to put a little piece of tape there so that I don't splinter the wood. At least I, that's what I've heard you should do. So I'm going to try it. This is my first time, I think, or second time using my drill in my DIYs. I'm excited. So I'm a little gun shy. So it takes me a little bit to push through and then I realize I can just push through and it's going to work. 
Now I'm erasing my lines that I drew in pencil and I've got my hole. Now I do have to make it a little wider at some point, but I'm able to push my little holder right through and I'm gonna hot glue on the bottom and along the top. And then I'm gonna touch up the black paint where I put the hot glue so that it's not so noticeable. Next, I'm gonna take those silver beads and I'm gonna measure the length of my paint sticks. I need one for each of the paint sticks, so there are four of them, so I'm going to cut the right length for four of them. Then I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to hot glue it to the edge of the paint stick on all four of them. Once all the beads are attached to one side of the paint sticks, I'm going to use my white paint. I'm going to paint the beads on all sides and in between all the little spaces. Then I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to attach each of the stir sticks to the sides of the lantern. Actually, they're kind of like diagonal in from the corners and I'm going to hold them until the hot glue dries. And then I will go around and I'm going to reinforce every seam where the paint stick hits the base with hot glue because I really want to make sure that these stay put. I'm going to take that top square, that the little plank that I already painted, and I'm going to hot glue that directly to the top. So putting a little bit of hot glue on each of those stir sticks. Now, I turns out I did not do this super evenly and it was sticking so well, I didn't want to break it off and deal with that. So it's a teeny bit crooked. Probably nobody will notice but me, you know. Now I'm gonna take my drill and I'm gonna drill into the cap piece. I'm going to drill a hole on each side in the middle because we're gonna have a little rope handle. I'm going to take some nautical rope, stick it through the hole, tie the knot on the underside, and then hot glue it so it sticks to the piece of wood. And then I'll cut off the nautical rope and then tie the next one in through the outside to the inside. Tie another knot and hot glue it. And that will become my little handle for this. And it's just so cute. I kept looking at the picture. I kept thinking it would have a little pull handle, but it just has a little rope and it's adorable. The last step is to hot glue this little cap piece right onto the top. And that actually completes the DIY. And I think it does look a lot like the original one and I'm really happy with how it turned out. You'll have to let me know what you guys think. This super cute little box that says got mail on Pinterest for $22.71. And I thought, I bet I could make that. So I found these two little crates from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna remove the tags and then I'm gonna get my utility knife out and I'm going to cut off one of the short ends on each one because what I wanna do is attach them together to make a wider box. I am definitely fast forwarding through this part because it took some serious muscle. I mean, either that or I'm just super weak and that actually could be it. So maybe it would be easy for anyone else. I have a problem on my kitchen counter with where we need to put our mail. And so this is going to solve that. And I'm really excited about that. Now that I've separated those pieces, I've sanded them. And of course using the ladybug vacuum to clean it up. And I will link that in the description box. Now I'm gonna use my Kills All Purpose Primer paint. I use this a lot. It goes on almost like a white chalk paint. It's perfect. And I did literally paint everything, bottom, top, sides, everything. I have this Buffalo Check tissue paper and I honestly can't remember if I got it at Dollar Tree or Walmart or Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure guys, sorry. Now I'm just cutting out the pieces that would be the right sizes approximately for the inside of the box. So basically two of every piece I cut and I'm gonna trim them and try to size them in there and I'm gonna Mod Podge it just like I've done in the past when you've seen me Mod Podge. Super easy, try to get as close to the right size as you can, lay down the Mod Podge, put it in the tissue paper, then lay down some more Mod Podge and then when all of the pieces are in there I'm going to once it's dry you don't want to do anything till the tissue paper is dry and then I'm going to rip off the edges and sand the remainder so that it looks nice and clean and you can just watch me do that right now
On the short side of the boxes, there's a little hole that looks like it would have been like a handle. So I'm using my X-Acto knife. I'm just going in there and I'm cutting around that hole and removing the tissue paper from that spot on both sides. Now I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to secure the two pieces together. Now I've been told that you don't overlap the two, that it doesn't work as well. So if you notice I'm just putting E6000 on each side and a little bit in the middle of the long side and then the hot glue around that and then I am putting it together. I'm going to wipe off the sides real quick because sometimes that E6000 oozes out. And same with the hot glue. And then I'm going to clamp them and hopefully they will stay together. I'm going to come in with some more hot glue down that center seam just for a little extra security. And now I've got some sticker letters from the Dollar Tree. And yes, I have a Cricut, but I don't always use it because sometimes I like the stickers that they have and it's cheaper than buying vinyl. So I'm spelling out Got Mail and I'm Mod Podging them. Even though they're sticky, I really want to make sure they stay. And I couldn't find a good question mark, so I just used a black marker and I drew it myself. Now I'm going to go in with some ink chalk paint and I'm going to distress it. Now this is my first time doing that with ink color. I usually do the antique wax or truffle or something else. I gotta be honest with you, I don't like it. So I end up going over it with some white and I'm using a little makeup sponge and I must've got it too wet because I feel like I overdid it big time. So I'll just go in and then I'm gonna use a little bit of silver, actually it's called steel, and I'm gonna fix that up. Now I'm using a little buffalo check ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to wrap it around the very top and hot glue that in place. The original one didn't have this, but this was just an inspired piece, so I decided to give it my own spin. And I like doing that. I'm not going for an exact dupe here. In keeping with the farmhouse look that I've got going here, I'm going to take some twine and wrap it around the bottom several times. No particular pattern or rhyme or reason and I'm going to hot glue it. And I'm going to take these little lavender pieces from the Dollar Tree with a little piece of greenery behind it. I'm going to hot glue that off to the left side of this box. I just think that makes it super cute and again, real farmhouse feel. Now I'm going to make a little bow. I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers, tie it in the center, and then clip the two loops on the end and just hot glue that right over the little end of the stem of the lavender just to finish it off. I forgot to film myself doing the next part, but I found a little uh, chalkboard with a clothespin on it from Dollar Tree, and then I put a little rub-on transfer of a little letter from Dollar Tree, and I added that to the right side. I really love how this turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to use that little uh, tray, the wooden tray, and the birdhouse made out of wood. I'm also going to use these little knobs that they sell at Dollar Tree. I actually end up only using the star ones. I don't use the moon ones. And I actually don't end up using any of these ropes. I start off using it and then I don't. And then this little garden edger piece, and I do cut that up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my tray, remove the tag, and I'm gonna paint it in the chalk paint color Fern by Waverly. I really love this color. I finally found it. My Walmart has been out of a lot of the Waverly paint colors, so they just finally got some and I stocked up and I'm really excited. Also, when I start out a project, a lot of times I throw everything on the table that I think I might use and then little by little I figure out what I'm actually going to use. So what you see in the beginning isn't always what I'm going to do. And I painted that entire tray, top, bottom, sides, everything. Now I'm going to take the birdhouse and I'm going to paint all of it in plaster. That's going to be my base coat. Plaster is another Waverly chalk paint color, kind of a slight off-white.
I'm gonna take the White Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm gonna just lightly, no, I wouldn't even say dry brush because I'm doing it a little heavier than that, so let's just call it kind of a white wash. And I'm just covering all of the sides and the edges and the tops and the inside and the bottom because I wanna give it a little bit more of an aged look. Even though I love that color fern, I love it with that white wax, it really looks nice. Quick poll question for you guys. How many of you actually use the antique white wax? I haven't heard that many people using it, so I'm kind of curious. Now I'm taking my square ruler and I'm trying to determine what the middle of each side is. And once I find it, I'm gonna put a little piece of uh, masking tape there and I'm going to drill a small hole and that's gonna be where my little star knobs are gonna go, one on each side. Now, originally I put these in there because I'm gonna create like a rope hanger for this and I needed something on the opposite sides. The handles are there already, but the um, longer sides didn't have anything. I eventually take the rope away and I don't make a hanger out of it, but I decided to leave the knobs because I kind of thought they were cute. Let me know what you think when I get all done with that. Now time for the fun painting. I'm gonna use some antique wax by Waverly and the color crimson, which is a really pretty red. I'm gonna paint my whole barn around the sides, front and back, red. Oh my gosh, isn't that red gorgeous, you guys? I just love it. Who doesn't love a red barn? This is so fun. I don't think I've ever painted one other than on a piece of paper, like back in grade school. Does anyone even say grade school anymore? Or did they say elementary school? I know in England they call it little school. What do you guys call it? I'm kind of curious now. I'm out of that scene, so I don't really know. I'm gonna use the Antique Waverly Wax to do the sides and underneath of the roof, kind of like the edging, if you will, and then also the very base of this house I'm gonna, or house, the barn now it is, I'm gonna do in that color. I really like that. I decided to leave the roof in the plaster color, but I'm gonna go ahead and very lightly dry brush it with the antique Waverly Wax. And that just means I put a teeny bit on my brush, wipe most of it off, and then drag a little bit on it. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing all around the sides so I can make the, the barn look old and dirty. And I'm gonna take an Arteza paint marker in the color brown, and I'm gonna paint on a door in the front. And then on the two sides, I'm going to do windows. And in the very back, I'm gonna make a little trellis, you'll see. And then I'm going to add some white crossbars on the door and on the windows. And I don't know why, but they're just not even at all. I don't know why I had such a hard time. And my Arteza paint pen in white just isn't working really well right now. I probably need to replace the tip. So I didn't use it and I should have because it probably would have come out so much better. Anyway, it's an old barn. Things would be broken and rickety, so it's okay. And I'm loving my trellis, you guys. I saw a picture of one, so I kind of was drawing it, looking at that, and I just think it came out so cute. Sometimes it's just the little details that really make something special and I really have fun with this one. And I do go over it with the white and then I also distress it lightly with the antique wax when I'm all done so that it doesn't look like stark white because then it wouldn't make any sense at all being an old dirty barn. using a very soft little cheap makeup brush like from Dollar Tree to do this kind of distressing. It is so nice because the little bristles are so wispy. So I just wanted to mention that in case anyone's looking for an option other than a chippy brush. I'm gonna hot glue that barn right on to my little tray. And you see I've got that rope there because I was making a hanger. And now I'm putting some Spanish moss. I'm just kind of gluing it down all inside the tray. I wanna cover up those screws from the knobs and just fill it in all around because ultimately this is a birdhouse. And there's my little edging piece. I cut it down to one of the little loops. And now I'm gonna end up cutting it even 
even shorter. I'm cutting off the little edging so that it's a nice curved smooth piece, as smooth as I can get it with tin snips cutting. They do a great job by the way, they cut right through that plastic. The hardest thing is just getting the right angle so you don't cut off too much. So you see there now I've cut off some of the bottom and I've made it shorter and I'm going to put it in and then I realized there is a screw in the middle so I've got to cut that middle piece a teeny bit shorter. And it's about here when I realized, no, this rope isn't gonna work. So I took it all out. And now I'm snipping that little middle piece so that it will all fit in there. And I'm gonna hot glue that little piece of the edging right in. And now it looks like a wrought iron fencing kind of a decor and I love it. This one even looks cute from the back. The only thing you could do different is put a matching piece of that garden edging up against it so it kind of rounds it out. It doesn't look hollow in the back. I also took four of those teeny little blocks, painted them with the plaster, and then did some Waverly wax over them to antique them a little, and I hot glue them to the very bottom. It's because of those knobs that I needed to do that so that it would sit flat. It just kind of sat just a little off. And by putting those four little blocks underneath, that was perfect. I love this one so much. Tell me what you think. I'm using the inside of a Dollar Tree canvas, just the frame, some skewers from Dollar Tree, and some tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to take my sanding sponge and I'm going to just make sure that all of the edges are nice and splinter free. And I'm going to clean up any of the dust left behind with my ladybug vacuum. And all of my tools are down in my Amazon store, so feel free to check it out in case you need some. I'm going to use my Kills White Primer and I'm going to paint this entire frame, back, front, inside, all everywhere, just the whole entire thing. I'm going to use my heat tool so I can dry this quickly and move on to the next step. I'm creating a little mini window and so for the pane dividers I'm going to use these little skewers. But first I'm just going to tape them down and paint them in that same white paint front and back. Then I'm going to take my tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to paint those as well. Just the parts that you're going to see. And now I'm going to figure out where I'm going to be placing them all. I'm going to create a little window box for florals. It's going to be so cute when this is done. I'm just positioning everything and then I'm going to start hot gluing it to the actual frame and creating my little box. Once all the pieces are in place, I'm going to go back in with the hot glue on the underside and just kind of reinforce every seam so that it's nice and secure. Now I'm doing the next level, which is going to be the very front, and I'm going to put them vertically and then again reinforcing wherever I can. I don't think I need anything stronger than hot glue because I'm just putting light florals in here, but if you were putting something heavier, I would suggest a more permanent stable glue. Next, I'm going to take my four skewers and I'm going to figure out exactly how long they need to be to put two vertical and two horizontal to make my little panes for the window. And I'm just going to use my little snips to go ahead and cut them to size and then I'm going to hot glue them down and do the first the vertical ones and then I'm going to do the horizontal ones. And this is so easy. They're definitely secure. I put hot glue under and over each of the ends of the skewers so there's no question that this is staying in place. Next, I'm going to very lightly dry brush some antique wax by Waverly over all of the white surfaces. And basically, I'm going to put a little bit on my brush, wipe most of it off, and then just kind of drag it around the edges and just wherever I want to see a little bit of distressing. Like I said, this is going to be a very, very light dry brush. I just want a little bit of an effect of it not being like stark white. 
always save styrofoam whenever I get something in a package. So I'm just going to cut a little teeny rectangular piece of this very messy styrofoam and I'm going to hot glue it into that little window box that I created. And then I'm going to take some really cute Dollar Tree florals and I'm just going to snip them all to make them the right size and I'm going to start putting them inside of this styrofoam and it just looks so cute already. Oh my gosh, I love these colors. I love this pick and um, this is just turning out so, so cute. I'm going to add some of these cute little off-white flowers. I think it's just the right touch with the purple and the yellow and the green and like I said I'm just really loving this. And then I'm going to take some jute cord from the Dollar Tree and I'm literally going to hot glue it to the back and wrap it around kind of crisscross and then I'm going to push it around and kind of shape it the way I want it. And this is just to add that little farmhouse touch to it and I absolutely love how this looks. I had a Goodwill find that had this little burlap flower on it and I took it off. I figured I'd save it and guess what? It's perfect for this DIY. It's going to hot glue it right to the center and literally that really makes this one so cute. Now I'm going to take a little bit of craft paper to cover up that back area because I don't want you to see any of my styrofoam or any of the mess. I'm just going to hot glue it and trim the edges and then I'm going to make a little hanger out of jute cord and this one's done and you guys, I love it. I think it's so cute. You could hang it and be like sitting on a shelf whatever you want just like bringing a little bit of outdoors indoors and it's just so cute in farmhouse i hope you guys like it let me know I'm going to take this really cute tray that I got at the thrift store and I've had it for a long time and I actually liked the pattern when I bought it but now I want to do something different with it. First thing I'm doing is cleaning it with some alcohol and I keep my alcohol in that little container that you just saw a moment ago. Very easy to use and I got it I think at Dollar Tree. And now I'm using the color ink from Waverly Chalk Paint to go ahead and paint the entire thing and that's just going to be the first layer of paint that I use. The next layer is going to be the wax in white from Waverly and I like it because you can still kind of see the dark color sort of peeking through and it gives it a little bit of you know a distressed type look almost a whitewash and I really like the effect plus you know because it's a wax it's a little bit more slippery and it just goes on with a little bit of a shine and I really like the way it looks and you can even see the brush strokes which is something else that I really like about it. I want to put something in the center of it that's decorative and I got this home sign from the Dollar Tree. Oh, actually I think it was Target Dollar Spot. Sorry about that. And I have this burlap kind of ribbon I got from Walmart and I thought, you know what, I love texture and I want to uh, kind of mix the elements with the metal and the burlap and then the wood. So I'm just going to put this diagonally across, cut off kind of those little edges and hot glue it inside. And then I'm going to hot glue the word home right across that. And I just think that makes it so cute, but it's simple and I can put things in the tray and style it that way. love how this one turned out. It's simple, but yet it's really homey and it's interesting to me with all the different textures. And I'd love to know what you think. Uh, would you have added the burlap or would you have just put the word home right on the tray? Let me know.
little tray that I found is from Holland or the Netherlands and it's got that blue and white tile there's four pieces of tile in the front and then it's got a wood you know base and I'm gonna clean it with some rubbing alcohol because of course you know it gets dirty sitting in thrift stores and then I've got these peel and stick tiles from the Dollar Tree and I just think they're gorgeous so I'm going to start off by centering a solid one right in you know the middle <laughs> and then I will try to piece the rest together around that. I think that is the easiest way to do it. It's not like a floor where I want to start in the corner. I want this to have a center piece, if you will. And I'm going to get some more of those tile pieces and I'm going to figure out the best way to attach them. The hardest part was getting it flush up against the edge. A couple times I got it right there and a couple times there was a gap. So you'll see in a little bit how I try to deal with that gap. But I think it came out good, and so I'm not going to worry too much about that little teeny gap. I'm going to go ahead and just continue piecing it so that the lines are all, you know, uh, where they're supposed to line up. Now when I'm all done with these pieces, I end up with four little corners left. That's where it gets tricky because it turns out I only have three pieces that fit in those corners. So I kind of had to wing it on the last one, but I think I figured out a way to camouflage it. So you'll have to let me know if you think that that worked. So you see how I got the corner there and I'm going to stick it in. And like I said, I've got three of those and I'm using a blade to just kind of cut all the way up to the edge. And sometimes I do a good job of that. And sometimes I don't, and I don't know why that is. And like there, I had a big gap, so I was able to cut another piece on that one, but it wasn't as easy to do on the other ones. And then when I get to the very fourth little corner, I didn't have a piece like that. So I found one that looked the most similar. You see how it's not the same, but it's not like horribly wrong. Anyway, I came up with a solution. I'm gonna use an Arteza silver marker and try to go around those edges where I didn't quite line it up flush to the wood edge. And it never really gets it the way I want it. So then I am going to try with some steel Waverly chalk paint. And so I go ahead and I do that, but then you see the line. So then I got out my chippy brush and I thought, you know what, I don't want this to be quite this shiny anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna dry brush over the whole thing. But first I'm gonna paint the wood base all in that steel color. I love that color and I think it'll match really well. Not too fond of that shade of wood that it was. So as I'm doing this, it took about two coats. And then I also took a little bit of the silver metallic folklore paint and I just very lightly dry brushed that over the gray on the handles and the base. And now I'm doing the steel over the top of the tiles and that gets rid of some of the shine and it helps camouflage some of those edges that I filled in. I'm gonna do that also with the silver on all of the wood and the center. And then because I still see that gray, I will come back in with some of my white paint and just very lightly dry brushed around the entire thing. And that way it really camouflages it. And so I feel like once I hit it with the white, you know, and then I was getting it on the wood. So I thought, ooh, I kind of like that. So I very lightly dry brushed. And you guys know dry brushing is you put very little on your brush, wipe most of it off and then drag it across your surface. That way you can control just how much is on there. I am loving how this turned out. I really do think it came out really nice. And I did put Mod Podge all over it and you will see it in the final reveal what it looks like when it's all dry but I'm very happy with how it turned out and I hope you guys like it. cute little, I don't know what exactly it is, a little drawer with a, maybe it's a pencil holder or something like that for a desk. They look like little fake books, but I found this at a thrift store and I thought I could do something cute with this. And I'm kind of going to go with the same color scheme as I did before. I'm going to prime it with my Kills White Primer. I went ahead and I just did a light coat of that and I'm going to use that Agave Paint by Waverly. I'm going to cover the entire drawer and the little pencil holder. The only thing I'm not going to do is the knob. Once they're all painted, I'm gonna take my metallic silver from Folklore Paints, and I am going to just paint that little knob. I'm gonna 
take that white kills primer that I had and I'm going to do a little bit of whitewashing kind of distressing like I did on the last piece because I want them to have a cohesive look and it's like a dry brush I'm just putting a teeny bit on my brush wiping most of it off and then lightly dragging it across until I get the look that I want and really there's no right or wrong way you can do this until it's exactly to your liking that's the beauty of crafting you get to do what you want I wanted this piece to have just a teeny teeny bit of shine so I took that metallic silver and I kind of dry brushed it all around you know nothing heavy but I just wanted to give it a little extra pizzazz I'm gonna take these white flowers and white baby's breath from the Dollar Tree and a part of a foam ball that I had used and I'm gonna cut it so that it will fit inside of what the pencil holder would be because I want this to become a vase so I'm gonna stick that in there and then I'm just gonna cut the flowers push the leaves up and arrange them just you know the way that I like them and using the tin snip to cut them to the right lengths I have these little silver like Mardi Gras beads that I got at the Dollar Tree and I decided that instead of filling it with moss or anything else I'm just gonna fill it with these silver beads and I think it just looks really cute kind of goes together with everything else and just gives it a little bit more of that modern look but still farmhouse I am super happy with the way this is turning out. I'd love to know what you guys think let me know in the comments if this is something that you like says spring more than flowers. So I'm gonna create a cute little flower box. I'm using one of those little wooden crates from the Dollar Tree, some flowers I got between Dollar Tree and the Target Dollar Spot, and also this tissue paper that I got at Dollar Tree that is so pretty and very spring-like. What I'm gonna do now is measure out the pieces I need to be able to decoupage this tissue paper all around the outside of this crate. I'm not gonna do the inside or the bottom because there's really no need. I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and I'm gonna cover one side at a time. And then I'm gonna lay out the pieces that I cut to fit. Made them just slightly bigger, but it's easier to work with than the big sheets of tissue paper. And now I'm gonna go ahead and secure every part of it to the crate and then press it down. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have any of my tools with me. So I didn't have my brayer and I just went ahead. This is such a small piece. It was really easy to just use my fingers very gently and press it down. And then I moved on to the next side, did the same thing. And both of the ends I did as well. take my little sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and very gently sand at the very top edges all the way around the crate and let the and this is after the Mod Podge dries by the way you don't want to do it before that with tissue paper because it'll pull it right off but if you do this very gently when it's dry it'll just separate and then all you have to do is a super light sanding right over the edge like I'm doing right there and then I move on to the next side If I had been home and I had my X-Acto knife, I could have really easily done the in-between the slats, but instead I used this stem that I didn't need, uh, I'd already cut the flowers off of it, just to break through that 
tissue paper and then I was able to use my little sanding sponge very carefully and get rid of that excess paper in there. Now what I do after I get all of the paper off is I go back over all those edges with the Mod Podge just so there isn't any little extra piece that's lifted that I didn't catch and that way it'll all adhere to the crate. And honestly, it looks like it was always on there. It looks so good. I love that technique. Now I'm gonna add this white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. It was a three strand cord and I pulled it apart and I'm just using one of the strands and I'm gonna hot glue it all the way around the top edge of this little crate. I didn't have any floral foam handy, so I just bunched up a couple of white napkins just to fill in the space. And then I trimmed off some of these little uh, pink and white flowers and some beautiful greenery. And literally, that's it. This one is done. I love it. I hope you guys love it too. And it really does feel like spring. Honestly, this one is the easiest. I said the other one was easiest, but no, this is the easiest. I got this home sign from Dollar Tree. It was, they put it out right when Valentine's stuff started going out. It's got a heart on the end. And I have this tissue paper. I don't end up using the tissue paper because I decided to simplify things. I tend to go the other way and I decided to channel my inner DIY beauty on purpose. My friend Leon up, she does things very simply and I love them and so I'm trying to do that more often. I'll put her channel link in my description below so you can see what I mean. I'm going to take this, I'm going to use my plaster colored paint from Waverly, it's Trap Pink, and I'm going to cover this but I'm not going to go for like a super super full coverage. I'm just going to let a little bit of that kind of wood grain peek through and I'm going to paint the sides as well but again kind of a sloppy paint letting some, see how some of that's peeking through? And I'm just going to do it till it gets to what I like because I'm not going to distress this. I'm going to let the sign distress itself. Now how's that making my craft work for me? Yeah. I like that. We can call that working smarter, not harder. Are you with me on that, everyone? <laughs> I have these really cute floral picks. I've been using them in a lot of DIYs. I got them at the Target dollar spot. And I'm just gonna pull off some of those little fern pieces and I'm gonna hot glue them around that heart. And then there's a couple little like white, off-white kind of flower pieces that are up at the top. And I'm gonna add those to the heart as well with a little hot glue. And that's it, you guys. This one will be done. You could hang this on the wall. You could sit it on a shelf. You could put it on a tiered tray or you could hang it in the middle of a wreath. I think it's got so many possibilities because of the fact that it's simple, neutral, and it would go with any design that has a farmhouse feel to it. I think this is going to be one of those really versatile pieces that I'll be able to use in a lot of different ways. And to me, again, that is working smarter, not harder. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I wanted to make something for my husband's desk. 
He has things everywhere, and I don't know how he finds anything, although he says he knows what, where everything is. But I thought I'd make him a little organization center so he could hang reminders, keep his pens and pencils, that kind of stuff. So I'm using these planks from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use six of them, and then these two little drawers. And I'm actually going to take out the little drawer inserts and use those and leave the others for a future DIY. I've also got this piece from another Dollar Tree sign that was just a piece of plastic with a little clip on it. And then I found this super cute little ampersand sign at a thrift store. And then I took a little Dollar Tree frame, took out the center, and I'm gonna use that piece as well. I'm using the Antique Wax by Waverly right now to apply it as a stain. So I'm just putting it on and then rubbing it off. And then I'm gonna hot glue each of these planks together. And once I, once I get them all together, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna shore them up on the back with some popsicle sticks, as you will see here. So funny story, I don't know why, but I only stained five of those planks instead of six. And so later on, you'll see me adding the six because I realized, wait, this isn't as long as I needed it to be. Oh well, things happen, right? I'm gonna take those popsicle sticks, figure out how I want to place them. I'm actually gonna have to trim the middle ones down a little bit. And then I'm just gonna hot glue them over the seams and across so that this way my sign will stay together. And I forgot to show it on camera, but I do finish off the back of the sign because I love doing that with craft paper. To make this look a little more finished and high end, I'm gonna take some more popsicle sticks and I'm going to measure across the front of that drawer where the little cutout is and create some little wood planks to put on there. I love that look. Once I have my four little wood planks for each of those drawers, I'm going to hot glue them right to the front and then I'm going to sand off any rough edges and I'm going to do the same thing where I stain the drawers using the Waverly Antique Wax and then rub off the excess. I want everything to have a really nice cohesive finished look. Also I want it to look a little bit on the rustic side because that's what my husband likes. take that little frame from the smaller picture where I took the center out and I'm going to also stain that with the antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to do everything but the very very top because I'm going to do a galvanized look for that one. To create the galvanized look I use a little bit of the metallic silver, a little bit of gray, a little bit of black, and a little bit of white and I just keep dabbing it on until it looks the way I want it to and I'm going to be comparing it to my little ampersand which is actually already galvanized. So I want it to look like they belong together and I think I accomplished that. It's a super easy technique. It's, it's just something you play with until you get it the way you want it. You could go as distressed as you want. You could add a different color for rust, like burnt umber, whatever you like. Honestly, it's to your liking and this is the way that I wanted it to look. And you can see it's starting to look a lot like metal instead of wood. I'm gonna take a little bit of jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna make a hanger. I'm gonna hot glue it to the back, make a little loop, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of masking tape over each side. And that seems to really hold those down perfectly with the combination of the hot glue and the masking tape. And after I cover the back with the craft paper, you won't see the masking tape or any of that. You'll just see the little twine hanging out. I wanted to give it a little bit of color, so I have this really cute scrapbook paper and I'm going to trace that piece of plastic all around. And we're going to use that plastic as a little whiteboard because you can use dry erase markers on it and then wipe it right off if you need to give yourself reminders or have little notes. So I'm just going to put a dot of hot glue in the four corners and I'm going to attach it to the back so you can just see it right through and it'll always have that pretty pattern behind it. It's right about now when I realized that I didn't do all six planks because I was positioning everything and all of a sudden I went, uh-oh, there's not enough room. <laughs> so I think I did it off camera, but I added the six plank and now I'm going to position everything. I'm gonna hot glue my little drawers down with those wood planks facing forward and I'm going to attach 
the little blue whiteboard and the box at the top that has the ampersand in it. And I'm loving the way this came out. I got this black faux leather. It was actually gifted to me by my friend Lisa Kennedy, Dollar Mom, here on YouTube, and it's from the Dollar Tree. I'll link her channel below so you can check her out. Thanks, Lisa. And I'm going to attach it to cover that seam, and I'm gonna use it in two other places just for a little bit of embellishment, and I just really like it. It kind of made it a little more masculine, and since this is going in my husband's office area, I wanted to make sure it wasn't overly feminine because he likes things, like I said, a little rustic and maybe a little more masculine. And I'm just continuing to position everything and then hot glue it down. And this is the little frame that's gonna go around the ampersand. And once that is dry with the hot glue, then I will also do the same thing to the ampersand itself and attach it. And I'm just reinforcing all those seams in there to make sure it stays. It's not holding anything, so I didn't need to use E6000, but I did wanna get a pretty decent hold. And I'm also going to attach the little dry erase plastic and make sure that that's down. And boy, this is just shaping up really nice. I'm I'm so happy with how this is turning out. I really like it. I hope you guys like it too. And the good news is that my husband loves it. So that's, I guess, what really matters, right? Since it's a gift for him. And I am gonna add a couple more pieces of that faux leather, like I mentioned, just one above and below the little dry erase plastic, because I thought that really just kind of made it look a little bit more finished. And like I said earlier, high end. And you know, you could use this to hold pencils and things, or you could put flowers in the bottom, whatever you like. is super simple. I'm using a coaster, two little pallet planks from the Dollar Tree, some florals from the Target Dollar Spot, some burlap from Walmart, and that's it. And I'm going to attach the two little planks together, and then I'm going to stain them with the antique wax, it's putting it on and then rubbing off the excess. And I'm gonna do both sides on this because that's how I'm gonna finish this one off. It doesn't make sense to put craft paper on it because of the slats. And I'm just making sure to cover every single piece of wood with this stain. I am also going to slightly distress the little coaster since it looks like it's got little wood planks on it too. I'm just going to go ahead and add some of the antique wax to that so that it will match with this kind of a rustic wood theme. I'm gonna take the burlap and I'm gonna cut out a piece so that it can lay right under the coaster and on top of the wood. And I'm gonna fray the edges a little bit. I just wanna add that for just that little extra embellishment and kind of that, again, rustic feel. I'm gonna use just a little bit of hot glue and be careful if you do this because the hot glue comes right through the burlap and you can burn yourself. I had to be super careful because I always burn myself, but I need to be better. And then I'm also gonna hot glue the coaster right on top of that, right in the center. And I'm loving the way that looks, but of course I'm thinking it needs something more. So I've got these little florals. I'm gonna cut off some of the little greenery pieces and position them at the top. I'm gonna to add a little flower and I'm also gonna add a little jute bow just because I just feel like it needed something extra. <laughs> I'm actually very happy with how it turned out. For the jute bow, I just wrapped the jute around two fingers until I you know, got it thick enough. And then I tied a little, another piece of jute right in the center. And then I just cut open the loops. And literally that's all I did to make that bow super easy. And it's really cute. And now I'm just hot gluing down the greenery, kind of like with the stems in the center so that it goes out on each side. And then I will place that little bow. And then in the center of the bow, I'm gonna put a cute little flower. And I think that really finishes this piece off. And I really like it. You know, it's not too many steps. It was super simple to do. You could go without the florals. You could go without the bow, but you know, just do it to the style that it fits your home and what you like.
next inspiration piece from Kirkland's is adorable. Now it wasn't outrageously expensive at $16.99, but I thought I could do it for less. I'm gonna use one of those little house pieces from Dollar Tree, some paint, some craft sticks, and some Jenga blocks. I'm gonna start with seven Jenga blocks and I'm gonna hot glue them together side to side to make the base. I'm gonna paint this base black using the ink paint from Waverly in the chalk paint. Next, I'm going to remove those flowers and the pieces of felt from the top of this house. For some reason, I have the hardest time with this. I use heat, I used a utility knife, you name it. I finally got everything off and then I sanded it. That seems to be the, the go-to for me is sanding those things off. And then I cleaned it up with my Lady Bug Vacuum and I'll put that link in the description box for you. I am going to paint this with some white acrylic paint. It's from a sample I got at Lowe's for like a dollar, great deal. And I just love the way it looks when it goes on. I'm gonna remove the stickers from the back and I'm gonna paint the entire house because I want the back to look nice too. The inspiration piece had some lines on it to kind of look like shiplap. So I'm using my square ruler to do that. I ended up going a little off on one of them, but it's okay, it still looks nice. I don't know what I did or why I did that, but there you go. Now I'm gonna take my little sanding sponge from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna lightly sand down those lines to dull them a little so that they look a little bit more like just edges of wood. I had these little greenery rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree, and so I need to recreate that wreath that was on the top, and so I cut a bunch of little pieces and just kind of curved them around, and then all you have to do is remove the back and just kind of scrape over the top, and that releases from the plastic, and when you lift it up, it will now be attached to your wood. It's a very, very easy transfer. It looks really nice. I mean, it was a dollar, and I've used this for so many projects, and I still have a bunch left over, so if you ever see this at Dollar Tree, you should definitely grab it. some uh, gingham or buffalo check ribbon um, just like the inspiration piece had although mine is just a little bit bigger squares and I made a teeny little shoestring bow with it I'm gonna hot glue it right on top just like theirs was and then I'm gonna trim the tails of the bow so that it looks like the one that I'm trying to recreate <music> Now the roof was a challenging part for me. Never did well in geometry in school, <laughs> and it's kind of be with a little bit of geometry. So I'm using these craft sticks, trying to figure out how long I need to make it, measuring it. I'm using my miter shears, which are awesome. Put the link for that in the description too if you're interested. And I'm gonna sand them and try to create a roof line. Now it occurred to me as I was messing with this that I needed to lift up a little higher. So after I figured out the top pieces and kind of the front pieces that would go next to them, I realized I needed to lift it up. So I put a couple of Jenga blocks, one on each side, I hot glued it down, and then I'm gonna paint it black and start assembling my roof. That solved my problem. Now anywhere that I overpainted a little bit with the black onto the white, I did go back and I touched it up after everything was dry. So if it looks a little messy, it's all taken care of. I'm hot gluing those two front pieces directly onto the Jenga box. And then the other two larger craft stick pieces will go right across the top of the roof and meet at the point. Now I did find there was a little gap you know, you can't see it in the picture here, but it's there. So I did end up putting in a little teeny piece of a craft stick that I cut and that fixed it. it. It raised up the point a little better. And so I just paint that black after I glue it in and then I can put those pieces of the roof on and it works perfectly.
I really love how this one turned out. It's so cute. There's the original in the picture. Now, I did not film for some reason what I did on my Cricut, which was I looked up fonts to try to match the best I could. And so there are basically four different fonts here. And then I added a tail with a black marker to the word family. And I don't remember the name of the fonts. I'm so sorry. I really hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments. I made some porch sitters and I'm gonna make another one. I had an extra piece of wood left and I was it has already been painted white with primer and I'm gonna go over it with another coat now and I'm just gonna make it a brighter white. Now obviously this board is a lot bigger than my crafting desk so I had to kind of set up a little stand here for it to be on and I'm just standing up in the room and you'll see my dogs walking around tried to crop it as much as I could but they're there and one of them does wear a diaper you will notice that and after I'm done painting I did use my heat tool I finally broke down and bought one. Oh my gosh it's awesome I ordered these really cool decals on Amazon and I'm going to put Mod Podge down first so there's a smoother surface for the decals to stick on and they're just sticky on the back you just peel them off and I'm placing them right on top of that Mod Podge after it dries and then I'm going to actually put Mod Podge over the top of every decal that I use because I want to seal this since it's going to be outside and I am using the Aileen's decoupage premium decoupage I don't know what it is it's like Mod Podge it's just a different brand and it costs a little less when you get a bigger bottle and I have these stencil letters that I have used before on the last port sitter I did that's why there's paint on them and I'm just going to position for the word welcome and they're really cool font I really like it I actually ripped the E so I had to use some tape to kind of put it back together again but hey it worked and I'm going to put my Mod Podge underneath that also and I heard that helps with bleeding so I'm gonna try this and this has got to do the trick because I'm a terrible stenciler and this might be my first time doing a good job so I'm gonna have to tape them down one letter at a time because of the tape it's gonna put too much space in between the letters and I don't want that so I'm just gonna do one at a time and I got this paint sample from Lowe's it's really pretty kind of sage color light sage and it's a Valspar paint this is a regular house paint and I cut off the end of a little foam brush just so I could have a little like spongy thing to dab it on. I couldn't find my regular dabbers. I'm, they're somewhere in my messy craft room that I'm in the midst of redoing right now. And then I'm holding down the parts of the stencil that stick up a little and I'm, there goes the dog with the diaper. You just saw that. <laughs> and I'm just going carefully and I'm going to do the first two letters a little bit slower and then I'll speed this up because you don't need to see me do the same thing over and over and over again. And here's the big reveal to see if this worked and I'm really excited. It did. Oh my gosh. I now know I need to use Mod Podge underneath when I stencil. I'm so excited. So now I'm moving on to the E and just positioning so I know exactly how far apart and then I'll tape that on. And now I'll stop talking and let you watch the rest of the word welcome get done. seen on Pinterest where people are putting on their welcome signs welcome ish so I found some letters that are stickers from the Dollar Tree and I did the ish on the bottom I think it's so cute and part of it is like you're saying you're welcome depending on how long you stay and depending on who you are <laughs> so anyway I just thought that was kind of a good laugh and I like it so I'm covering those letters with Mod Podge and now I'm taking that sage paint and I'm going to take a little art brush and I'm going to fill in all the letters a little darker because I intentionally was dabbing very lightly so I wouldn't bleed. So now I'm just going to go back and fill in all the letters and also the O has a little break in it and that's not really a style I like so I'm just going to fill that in. It was the only one that had it so that was kind of funny. And now I really like the way they look. I think they came out great. And more Mod Podge because I'm going to add another decal on the bottom. This particular roll of decals that I ordered on Amazon came with a bunch of gorgeous florals and a bunch of butterflies. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to position the florals and the butterflies all over this sign and just kind of wherever I think it looks pretty. 
there's no rhyme or reason. And then I cover each and every single one of them with more of, it's not really Mod Podge. I keep calling it that, but you guys know what I mean. It's, what if I say aliens? Nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to keep calling it Mod Podge, even though we know it's not. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> And now I'm going to put some more of that down, put the bigger decals and then some more butterflies. And then when I'm all done with that, I'm going to put that Mod Podge over the word welcome because I want to seal that paint as well. I will probably at some point need to go back and deal with the edges because I did not do that. But I want to make this a two-sided porch sign at some point and I wasn't ready to do that today. So I left that part to be done the next time I do the backside. And the backside will probably be for summer. This is for spring and then you know I'll have a summer one and then eventually I can do a fall and winter one which I did for my neighbor but I don't have one so there'll be more projects coming down the road. I am really loving how this is turning out and I hope you guys like it. It feels very much like springtime to me. It's also very welcoming. So, well, welcoming-ish, right? <laughs> I'm going to take this little kind of a wooden tag with slats on it from the Dollar Tree and then a piece from another Dollar Tree item. I'm going to use some scrapbook paper and I'm just going to cut out different sizes and attach it to the different parts of the wood. And I'm really enjoying mixing all these colors and patterns. As long as they're similar colors, I think it goes together really, really well. Attaching my scrapbook paper that I cut out with a glue stick and then I'm going to use a little blade and cut through the slats on the back so you can see through them and the scrapbook paper doesn't cover them. Once that's done, I'm going to get my little crate from the Dollar Tree ready using the steel color of chalk paint by Waverly. I'm going to paint the whole thing. And then the very bottom I'm going to paint in the elephant color. I'm going to use that elephant color to distress as well. And I'm going to try a new technique where after I do a heavy distressing, I'm going to come back with a baby wipe and wipe it down and get it to the exact look that I want. Want. And you know, if you wipe off too much, add a little more and so forth. It's really easy to do. And then I'm going to take the back side of this one. I like to finish my crafts off and I am going to paint that as well. In order to attach the two pieces, I'm going to use some craft sticks. And what I'm going to do is cut them in half using my little miter shears, which are in my Amazon store. They're a really cool tool. And then I'm going to use this tight bond, a very strong adhesive that I also got on Amazon. And I'm going to attach the popsicle sticks right where the slats would be on my tag. So there's going to be four of those, but they're really just halves. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to put some weight on it. I only had two clamps that would fit in there. And then once that's dry, I come back in and I'm going to paint it with the steel color so that it all matches. And then I'm gonna also put glue on those slats and attach my piece. So there you go. And it actually is staying really well and I'm very happy with how it looks and it's very cohesive. And I'm gonna clamp that in and let that dry. I actually let it dry overnight just to be sure. I decided to use some silver vinyl and so I'm going to put the plaster color of chalk paint distressed heavily over the front. That way you'll be able to see my vinyl lettering on there. And I did Super. decide to cut out the pieces so I could apply them separately because of the spacing that I needed. I tried to measure in advance but I didn't do a great job with that. So I am just going ahead putting it on. I'm using my scraper tool to make sure that the vinyl stays down and then I'm going to carefully remove the transfer tape and there you go. I love the way this looks. It's so cute and I'm really thinking it's so perfect personalized now and it was so easy to do and I have a little bit left of this little garland piece so I cut it in half and I applied it to the top and I thought that was just a great finishing touch for this one. I'm going to take my blade and I'm just going to cut those little pieces that are over the slats just like I did with the scrapbook paper so that I can make sure you can see through it. And now I've got some floral foam that I'm going to cut down to size and I've got this really cool greenery from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting everything into smaller pieces so I can arrange them exactly how I want to. And then I'm going to add these blue flowers and some more greenery. I like the different textures and I like, you know, there's some white flowers. I just love that. And now this one's done and I really hope you like it.
this spring DIY so much and it's so simple. I got this little wooden birdhouse at the Dollar Tree and I also have some tissue paper from the Dollar Tree that I think is gorgeous. I love that color and the flowers. I'm using some plaster chalk paint from Waverly. I'm going to be decoupaging but I like to put paint underneath it because sometimes if you don't it kind of yellows the color a little because the wood isn't a pure white. So in case you're wondering why I'm painting it that's why. I'm also going to use the antique wax and I'm just going to paint the base of it in this plaster color and then I'm going to use the antique wax to stain the roof pieces and basically I just put it on and then I take a paper towel and I wipe off the excess so it has that stain look and you can still see the wood grain. I'm going to use the tissue paper for decoupaging around the outside of the birdhouse. Not the very base it's sort of standing on but just the sides. So I'm cutting out some pieces so that I have a smaller you know, piece of tissue paper to work with, less excess, especially because the birdhouse is so small. And I'm going to get my Mod Podge out and I'm going to lay some down and then I'm going to put the tissue paper on top and then I'm going to add more Mod Podge on top of that and then I'm going to wait for it to dry, very important, otherwise the tissue paper will rip. And then once it's dry, I will come in with my little sanding sponge and then I will start getting the excess off. And if I can't use the sponge in some of those little tight spots like by the roof, I have a little blade that I'm going to use to try to cut it off instead. This part was a little bit intricate, you know, kind of getting into all the little nooks and crannies to get away the excess tissue. It's harder to do on smaller pieces like this, especially when there's raised edges and so forth. But you know, a little patience and just a little bit of elbow grease and you'll get it done. For the front of the birdhouse, I needed to tear some little pieces and put them on individually because there's that hole in the middle and then the little perch. Putting a whole piece wouldn't have worked. So instead I just cut out some pieces, or actually I ripped them because it looks better when you decoupage if you rip the edges. And I just placed them all around and that's how I covered it. It really worked out fine and no it's not like a cohesive design but it still looks really good because it was a bit of a muted pattern on the tissue paper anyway. I decided to add a little bit of greenery. I had this pick I got at the Target dollar spot. And I just cut off little pieces and I attached them with hot glue around the whole of the birdhouse. And then there was this one little kind of flower. And I put that right at the very peak of the roof there in the front. And I just think it looks so cute. I'm absolutely loving how this birdhouse turned out. It's gonna look really cute on a tiered tray and that's what I think I'm gonna do with it. What would you guys do with it? And have you ever decoupaged a little birdhouse like this? I think it's the cutest thing ever. The last thing I decided to do is put a little bit of jute twine right around the base and that way it kind of covers up any rough edges from the decoupaging and I just think that finishes it off and I'm so happy with it.
why I end up just using this darker nautical rope, a bunch of different scrapbook papers, and this old shelf that I just had laying around and wasn't using. And the first thing that I'm going to do is sand it down so that I can paint it and the paint will stick. And I'm just using my little sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree. Then I'm going to wipe off all the dust with a cloth. Then I picked all of these cute little coastal themed pieces of scrapbook paper and now I'm just going to cut them down to little strips that will fit on my board. And I'm going to be making a sign with these. And I used my little cutter to do that. And now I'm just figuring out my pattern that I want to do. And then I'm going to Mod Podge them all down to this board. And I'm going to just start from one end, work towards the middle, and then go on the other end and work back towards the middle. That way I establish the pattern that I did and I can make sure that everything is even and I'm using my little brayer to flatten it out and get rid of bubbles and I have all of my tools like the brayer and other things down in my Amazon store if you need something like that feel free to check that out it does help my channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra and thanks in advance if you do that and like I said I am just going ahead and arranging these with Mod Podge and I'm loving this paper I got it at Hobby Lobby it was like a coastal themed little mini book it is just gorgeous and then I overlap those little striped ones right in the middle because I just love them. Now that it's all on, I'm just making sure I get all the bubbles out and I'm going to sand all of the edges going all the way around because sometimes you get a little hangover of the paper and this gives it a nice clean edge and it kind of makes it look like it's part of the board. And then I'm going to clean up all the dust from the sanding with my little ladybug vacuum. It's just a lifesaver. I'm using my white primer kills paint to paint all around the edges because some of them were unfinished. And this way, it just gives it again more of that coastal look, kind of distresses the edges a little bit. I'm going to dry it off with my heat tool so that I can move forward more quickly. I'm not the most patient person, so I don't like to wait. Now I'm going to get out a pencil and after I open up my nautical rope, and I'm going to write out the word beach going vertically down my sign. And that way I know exactly where to put my rope. I'm going to put some Mod Podge over the top just to make sure that everything is sealed and the paper doesn't come off. And once that is dry, then I'm going to start cutting my rope to cover the letters that I drew out. I'm actually going to do all the straight pieces first. So it looks like I'm doing this in a weird order, but I just thought it would be easier to get all the straight pieces on there and I'm hot gluing them right to the sign. And then I will come back in and do the curved pieces. And I'm loving how this is turning out. It was actually super easy, honestly. It looks like it would be kind of hard to do, but it's really not. I thought it would take longer than it did. It was super fast and actually it's kind of fun. I enjoy doing it. And now that I got to the B, that's the last letter. And I was looking at this thinking, it's almost a little dark and I wanted it to look like maybe the sand was hitting it, you know, so it would look a little worn. So I took a white Arteza paint marker and I just lightly brushed over the top of every letter and that gave it that really beachy kind of coastal look that I was going for. And I love it because think about it, there's always sand in the air and everything gets misted with it. And this kind of gave it that feel. So it's super, super cute. On the back of the sign, there were these little holes from where the shelf was. So what I did was I cut some more nautical rope and I hot glued it down into those little grooves where the holes are. And once I did that, I took two screws and I thought this is a very heavy shelf so I couldn't just put it on with glue. And I used my drill and I screwed in a screw on each side and made it really secure and that's it. I absolutely love how this turned out and honestly, it was super easy. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you like it. I'm going to use a mason jar, some faux leather from burlapfabric.com that they were so kind to send me and I'll put all the information in my description box, some florals that I got from Dollar Tree and Target, and then I've got those pop-up stickers you can see in the background too. 
Right now I'm going to use my square and I'm going to cut a strip of the faux leather. I'd already cut out a piece to begin with, but now I'm just going to cut one that's just about the right width for what I'd like to see on my mason jar. And I'm going to cut that out after I've drawn the line on the back side so you'll never see it again. And I do a lot of trimming to get this just right. I don't put it all on camera because, you know, who wants to watch me trim? Now I'm going to take out these little um, pop-up stickers. I love these things because with my metallic silver paint from Folklore, you can actually make them look like little rivets. Now I'm going to paint them with my plaster colored chalk paint first because that'll make it easier for the silver to stick. And I don't know why I only painted two to begin with. I actually need four of these so I do go back and paint two more. I don't know what I was thinking. And then I've got these two little boards that I got out of a little shelf from the Target dollar spot and I used the shelf for something else and I just kept those two little shelf pieces and I decided that they would be great for this project. So what I'm going to do is put them together with some hot glue and then it'll look like planks that way. And it was already painted white and it's already a little distressed so I don't actually have to do anything else to that which was really really nice because hey when you get that and you use it as extra pieces from a different DIY it's like bonus and it's almost like free. Now I'm going to take my little mason jar and I'm going to put a boatload of hot glue on there and I'm just going to stick it right on the planks. And it actually stays really well, but I'm going to also use my faux leather and I'm going to glue that down on either side and then I'm gonna cut off the edges. So it looks like it's just kind of wrapped around it. And it's just one more little form of security. I'm gonna tuck a little hot glue under little parts of the faux leather too to just kind of stick it to the jar as well. And you can see me doing that right here. And I'm already loving the way this is looking. It's very fresh and with the white, I just really like it. I, you know, I like some of the darker just stuff too but sometimes it's just nice to see something a little brighter. Now I'm going to trim the edges and then tack them down with some more hot glue. Now I'm going to take those little pop-up stickers that I painted and I'm going to put two on each side towards the corners of the faux leather so it looks like little tacks or rivets holding down the faux leather. Just kind of brings that look up a little higher and makes it look a little more finished and expensive and I love the way that looks. After trimming the faux leather I had another piece left and I decided to trim that even narrower and make a faux hanger. <laughs> We're into faux here today. I don't think it's going to be strong enough to hold this up but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it real thin. I'm going to attach it to each sides and then up and over the top and then I'll make another little rivet on each side and that'll be like a faux hanger. On the back I'll actually put a little bit of jute twine for a real hanger and secure that with tons of hot glue and some masking tape across it as well and I just think this will give it such a cute look but at the same time I'll have a practical way to hang it without you know breaking anything. And I'm going to actually use two of the smaller pop-up stickers to make the little rivets or tacks for the side there for that top faux hanger. It'll just look like it's attached then by something a little bit more sturdy. And then I'm going to take the greenery that I got and I'm going to trim it down to size and I'm actually going to position it and use some hot glue to attach it to the inside of the mason jar. That way I can get it exactly where I want it. I'm not looking to like fill the whole thing up. I actually want it to kind of lean up against those little planks. I think that's going to look really cute. And then I'm going to add 
the little, I think those are tulips. I'm not sure. They look like mini tulips. I don't know what they are. <laughs> anyway, it's so pretty and I'm just going to do the same thing there. And I'm also going to tack down the leaves a little bit so they lay the way I want them to look. And instead of kind of bunched together, I like it to look a little more spread out. I can just add a drop of hot glue. You won't even see it. And that way it'll just look really, really nice. Now, if you decide to make this, you could use any florals that you want that fit your decor. You could change them out for different seasons. adorable wood rainbow with a Dollar Tree. It must be a new item because I'd never seen it before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting it with different shades of kind of like a turquoise-ish color. So I'm starting with Peacock and I'm going to do that first indent and then the edges going up to the risen part. Then I'm going to take some agave and I'm going to do the next indented part and the edges between the two raised parts for that one. Then I'm going to take the color pool. These are all Waverly chalk paints and I'm going to do the next indent and just do the exact same thing that I have already done and finish up all the edges on that as well. Then I'm going to take the color crystal, which is lighter, and I'm going to do the very last indented part. So as you can see, it's kind of like an ombre turquoise type of thing. And then I'm going to use warm buff from Apple Barrel paints and I'm going to do all that raised part of the rainbow on the front. I'm going to use my Antique Wax by Waverly and I am going to stain all of the rest of the raw wood, which is the very bottom, the inside of the rainbow, and then the back. And I'm wiping off the excess. I just want the contrast of the stained wood, the warm buff, and then the pretty colors that are making my ombre rainbow. And I'm loving this. It's kind of a cross between farmhouse and boho. So that's, I think, a style that I really like and I'm kind of realizing that more and more as I make things. Now, I do get a little bit of my antique wax on the front. So I'm just going to take some of the paint and I'm going to go back and touch up those spots where I went over it. And the reason I'm showing you this is because this is very hard to do without going over the lines because taping this would be really a pain. So I thought it would just be easier to go over and do the touch-ups afterwards. And actually, I don't think I did too bad. I feel like it should have been worse. Like I should have had way more paint everywhere. Anyway, but this worked out great. I touched it up and it looks so, so cute. And I'm absolutely loving this piece. You'll have to tell me what you think down in the comments. It was so easy, you guys. There's just no reason that anyone couldn't do this with any colors that go with your decor. Thank you so much for watching. You are truly a blessing to me. I've got another video on the screen, like I always do. If you enjoyed this one, definitely click on that one. And if you do, I will see you there. Until next time, bye. On the streets where the lights are red, I've been hiding the world safely in my head.